Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. This is PB Precipice. We've got a great show for you today. Before we get into it, just a few quick reminders. Games Done Quick is returning to PAX East 2023 on March 23rd to 26th. We are looking for marathon-style speedruns to showcase at the event. Stay tuned for the schedule to be released this week. Uh, Frost Hotels 2023 just wrapped up, raised 150k for Malala Fund. You can go to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for more information on that. With all that said, we've got uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. That's the right game, right? I didn't just read that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're very that's the one. I really hope <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, like, I hope so. That's the one, right? Yeah, it's pretty, anyway. Is that the game we're playing? Twilight Princess? Okay. All right, sure. Uh, yeah, we just gave you a random Zelda game. I hope you can do it. Uh, we got two lovely guests here. I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Mr. Alberto23, and this is my uh, my my commentator, Bo Willabeast. Hi, I run this game too. Yes, he is the world record holder, and I am the third place holder, and I'm trying to bop him. Yep, today could be the day. Yeah, I could do it today. I've been very close, very, very, very close. Yep. Yeah, so my PB is uh, two, oh gosh, oh gosh, 251.26. The world record is 250.53 by this guy. So I only have 30 seconds to go. That's pretty close. I believe in you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I yeah, also have the best sub of best in the community. My sub of best is 246.03. That puts me five minutes and 20 seconds off. So I have a lot of time saved. Yeah, it's a long and difficult run. But um, yeah, it could happen. Yep, could happen today. So. Anyway, I guess, uh, are we ready to get started? Whenever you're ready, just give us the countdown. Alright, so, uh, we, I will count down, um... Alright, let's go ahead and begin. So, we're ready. Um, we'll count down. Ready? In five, four, three, two, one, go. Alright. Uh, so do you want to take a bit, or do you want me to take it? Oh, uh, you can go ahead. All right. Um, so Alberto is going to start this... Oh, okay, so one of the nicest things about uh, Twilight Princess runs is that they start right away. So you'll see Alberto took control of Link just nine seconds after pressing start. Um, really, really nice. We don't have any intro to skip. No intro cuts. Um, well, it's automatically skipped anyway. Uh, so he's going to start off by taking this rock over to a gate. Uh, the purpose of this is to do a trick called Back in Time. And what Back in Time does is it lets you uh, play as Link on the title screen. And if you've seen any Skyward Sword speedruns, you're probably intimately familiar with this. It's just all over Skyward Sword. Um, going for a side hop a bit. I'm a few seconds behind. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, very um, nice first try. That's frame perfect, so. Yeah, so it's a frame perfect trick. Um, if you had failed it, he would have spawned back at the beginning of the area and lost like 50 seconds. And. Uh, back in time can be used for a few different things in this game. What he's doing with it right now is just making a save file. Because on the title screen, Link has a lot of really helpful properties. And if we make a save on the title screen, then we get those properties. Um, the most helpful one is that... Well, the, the most obvious ones are that he's wearing the hero's clothes and that he has a sword and a shield, though only kind of, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but probably the most important one is that the flag for having a tamed opponent is set. And that is going to allow Al to get the Iron Boots really, really early uh, without having to make a separate trip all the way back to Orden later in the run. Uh, and I, I mentioned Skyward Sword back in time earlier. Skyward, or sorry, uh, back in time in Twilight Princess is not quite as powerful as it is in Skyward Sword. We are going to use it another time in the run, but it's, it's not going to be a main feature. When I go through these areas, I need to be, uh, it's very important to have frame perfect rolls because, especially on slopes, if you don't maintain frame perfect rolls, you lose a lot of speed. So I'm trying to make sure every roll is as soon as possible. Yep. And if anyone watching wants to be really anal about it, you can look in the top right corner of the screen. And if, um, if the HUD flashes, like the lantern flashes on the Y button, then the roll is not frame perfect. But if it stays dim, then it was frame perfect. Um, yeah, slopes are very important to your rolls in this game. 
uh, whether you're going up or down, you lose speed when you're on the... And yeah. this area is very slopey and very laggy, which is why I'll just uh, turn the camera that way. Yeah, I was trying to keep it turned, but I kind of just uh, messed up, turned it back. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. So I've got live split going at the same time, so I'll be able to call out what I get for all my split times. Yeah, generally in a PB attempt, we're looking for a sub four cage break. That indicates, you know, good rolls, good time getting through the gate and all that. And you got through the gate first bonk, right? Yes. Nice. That's all. Wait, no, uh, no, I think it was second bonk. Wait, I don't remember. I think it was second roll, but first bonk. I, I don't know. I was kind of. I was figuring out my window management. Yes, this was a support. That was a 359. Nice. A good start. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot that can go wrong right at the beginning of TP runs. Um, I mentioned earlier that back in time, save has a lot of properties that are desirable for us. And one is that it uh, clears the first day of Orden Village. So, you know, when you're a casual playthrough, you would normally have to get the fishing rod and the slingshot before you can go off and save Tallow. But um, he, or, and one round of goats as well. Um, but Al was able to do that just now. He still has one round of goats to go though before Gordon, like the the tutorial stuff at the beginning is cleared. So he will have to herd these guys. There are twenty of them, and it is a significant RNG component. Uh, it's not entirely RNG though. Basically, the goats will always spawn in the same places and facing the same directions, but their activation radius for when they run away from you will be uh, different each time based on RNG. He had one really hyperactive goat there. Yeah. It's, it All can right, be pretty tough to manage. This guy is in a very awkward position. Yeah. Uh, okay, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, I'm surprised that one didn't run away. Okay, I got one more. Yeah, not... Oh, God. <laughs> not the yeah, nicest so goats. Th this is rough, but very relatable. Yeah. This happens to all of us. The, the, the best RTA goats time is a 1530. Um, and this is a you know, 4297. But if you watch TP races and no resets, that happens all the time. Yeah, it's just because they just, like... The way they move is... Uh, is they're very sensitive... And so if you make one little mistake, the slightest bit off, and they go in a very bad direction. Yeah. Um, and so now we're doing the last thing we're going to do in Orden for the entire rest of the run, which is uh, wrestling bow. Again, this is supposed to happen much later in the game, like in a casual playthrough. This would happen after you tame Epona after beating Elden Twilight. But because of the back-in-time save, having the Epona, save, or Epona tamed flag set, uh, Al is able to do it now that the cutscene's a little broken. He's got to advance all the way through it manually instead of it just happening. Yeah. Do we know what? Why exactly did this happen? I don't. I don't exactly know why. Why does the cutscene break? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm why not is sure it multiple text boxes? Uh. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but in another category, Goron Mines RTA, it's really useful that it's multiple text boxes because you can do a trick called text displacement with it really easily. You just talk mm. to Bo a few times. Excuse me, and then leave, and it applies that conversation progress to another NPC. Um, so yeah, this is essentially weighted rock, paper, scissors. Al is hoping to knock off Bo in one slap, and you know, and then one push each time, and mm -hmm. that was a really good round. Very nice. Yeah, it's um, pure RNG. And, yeah, pure RNG, and then to knock Bo off quickly, he's got to mash really quickly. But not too quickly. Um, and I see... Yeah, a question in chat about the GameCube version. The GameCube version's any percent run, uh, so this is the GameCube version, and the GameCube version's any percent run is, uh, yeah, as DGD said, something like 25 minutes faster than the Wii's any percent run. The main glitch that's patched in the Wii version wasn't actually patched intentionally. It's um, uh, Boomerang LJAs, which we'll see quite a few of in this run. Um, 
there, there are some other differences as well. Some in Wii's favor, like the Wii version has faster load times and less lag. But yeah, ultimately, this one is the faster version. Though I, I wouldn't consider the GameCube and Wii versions to be in competition with each other. They're just different speedruns. Same for the HD version. And I was going to make a save here outside Bo's house. This is going to be important later. Um, I, I won't go into that yet. We'll go into that when you're getting there. Yeah, just remember that save. That's very important. If I had not done that, the run would have been, been completely and totally gone. I well, do not know how to back that up. I, I, oh. I'd have to go through it, Forest Temple normally, I guess. No, no, it's it's actually really easy. You can just die in back in time and you get um, warped into the King Bulban fight. It's oh. just slower than using the save. Okay, well, I'm glad that you knew that because... Well, I, it won't matter today, but um, I'll remember that for later. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That's used in some routes intentionally. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Um, but yeah, uh, Al does have a bit more tutorial to do. Uh, like I said before, the Orden tutorial is done, but he's still got the Wolf tutorial to do. And this will take place in the sewers and just introduce you to Wolf Link. Oh, very, very important trick coming up here. Box break. Can you do it? Yes. Very nice. Babes, um, how many frames? Three? Three. Uh, yeah, according to Gymnast, it's three frames. I, I've never tried to time it myself. The run is saved. Three frames. Um... Uh, the average Twilight Princess speedrun, I can tell you what that is. Um, the, the world record is 2 hours and 50 minutes for this category. And uh, Alberto usually gets this up three times. My average is 254. 254. And, um, no, some glitches are patched out in the HD version, but a lot of big ones aren't. Uh, the big ones that are patched are map glitch, which we'll talk about later, back in time, which uh, Alberto's already done and early Master Sword, which technically isn't patched, but like the fast way of doing it is patched, so it's not useful anymore. Um, so the HD any percent world record is... Oh, how fast is that? It's like a 315 or something? So not uh, too much The slower. HD? Yeah, something like, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't run that. Um, but yeah, Alberto's got to run through the sewers here. Fortunately, he knows all the pathing and doesn't need to blindly jump at hexagons and get attacked by squeakles. <laughs> um, and there are a bunch of little time savers in sewers. I'll talk about dash canceling in a second because we're just legally obligated to talk about dash canceling here. But he just talked to Midna from slightly farther away than her cutscene trigger um, activates at, and that made the time between text boxes a little bit shorter. There, he had to fall down once, that wasn't a mistake, and he did so in such a way that he didn't land in the water, but did get really close to the crumbly bits, and that made it so that he could, uh, he, he skipped a minute text box. And then all over the place here, he's gonna be going for one framers, which are jumps that you can get, like Midna jumps by pressing Z uh, before Midna does her animation of flying away. On every text box, or sorry, every time one of those jumps comes up, like right here, right after a text box, there's one frame where you can get an early jump, and you can get it on this one. Um, except for one text box later on. In the and it's funny, like, obviously a task is going to get all of those, and it adds up to quite a bit. Like, a human can't really expect to get all of those, but if you get all the time savers in, uh, in sewers, it's like 10 seconds or something. is a lot. That was a very interesting camera. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> I, there was one time I was running up to Fado to start Goats, and I got a, or sorry, it was Goats 1, so it's not really the same as Goats 2, but I got a camera that was just a close-up of his face, filling my oh, whole screen. Nice. <laughs> Uh, we okay, got a really so, big trick coming up. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably stop talking right as you get near the end of the bridge. Uh, yeah. Um, or, or do you want to take any of it? 
Uh, sure. So, I- you may notice I have the sword and shield. I got that from back in time. But, for some reason, even though I still have it, like, Minda's not gonna let me into Fair and Twilight until I get the sword and shield. So she tell me, oh, go get the sword and shield. Well, uh, I'm actually gonna skip doing that, because, uh, what you can instead do is you can lead this Bolden. We like to call him Hugo. His name is Hugo. We can lead Hi, him Hugo. all the way. Hi, Hugo. We can do a very powerful trick called an LJA, a long jump attack. Uh, we're gonna see it a lot of times throughout the run. You could do it as wolf and as human. Basically, if an enemy is far away, uh, the game has a way to make you jump attack faster to reach them from far away. We can use that to jump all the way across this trigger to get into the twilight without Midna making us go back. Good it's luck. very you precise. It. Thank you. I guess we could talk about it after I get it. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, spoilers um, for me. Nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, so, uh, it's RNG, too, like, whether he kind of cooperates. So, he saw he attacked a lot there. That's just RNG, his pattern. Do you want to go ahead and go over it? Do you want? Uh, yeah, sure. So, I, I think the only thing that you didn't really mention there is that... Well, no, two things. One, you may have seen along the way that Alberto was digging up some rupees. Uh, over the course of the run, we do want to get up to 300 rupees to pay to repair the Sky Cannon to get to City in the Sky later, and as many RNG rupees as possible that we can get for free like that, like just as he's luring Hugo over and so forth, um, will be helpful. And then, yeah, uh, so it wasn't, well, that trick is to be fast, but at this point in the run, having done the back in time save, you can't go get the Sword and the Shield. You're locked out of it, um, just by virtue of what you've skipped in the intro. So. If you need, if you want to progress in the game after doing a back in time save, you have to do that trick, which is why back in time saves are not recommended for casual players. Even if you want to skip the tutorial section at the beginning, uh, learning to do sword and shield skip just to do a casual run would—it's <laughs> a very hard trick for a first time. It's probably one of the hardest in the run. Yeah, I'd put it up there with the. Uh... With all the other, there's the, there's harder ones too. It gets it gets harder from there. The, yeah, there are some tough ones for sure. That that one's uh, kind of notorious for being a gatekeeper just because it's near the beginning of the run. It's like the it's definitely the first hard trick in the run, um, and a lot of new players kind of get stumped on it. But if anyone watching is interested in doing Twilight Princess speedruns or learning to do them, uh, please do join the Twilight Princess speedrunning Discord server. There are lots of people there, uh, and we will all be help, happy to help. Anything that can help with. Um, so now Alberto's making his way through Farron. Uh, you may have noticed that he forgot to get the uh, Farron vessel. It's going to oh be no! a huge time loss. Oh no. Oops. Oh no. Uh, it turns out you can actually skip it. Um, we can skip basically everything in Farron. There are just two things that we're going to need that are in this area there's the Master Sword, which is in the Sacred Grove. And there is the boomerang, which is in the forest temple. And so he's making his way over to North Farron, where he's going to do a trick called EMS, Early Master Sword. And uh, it's just very convenient that Master Sword's location is very close to uh, an inbounds area with collision. Or, I, sorry, an out of bounds area with collision in Farron. Because normally you're not supposed to go get the Master Sword until after you've beaten three dungeons, but here, 20 minutes or so into the run, well, I, now it's only 17 or so. Um, I was going to go get it already. He's a cheater. <laughs> Very nice. First try. Very good. Sorry for the spoilers. I know I'm seeing yeah. it before you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know if it's... Uh, let's see. I don't know if the viewers are seeing it at the same time as me or the same time as you, so maybe I'm behind. Technically, anyway, we're yeah. behind because it's going to be synced up for them, so... Okay, got it. Yeah. So, not spoilers for everybody else. Um, yeah, now El's just got to make his way through the Sacred Grove, and then he'll have the Master Sword without beating any dungeons. That was a quick climb there. That's the first time you're going to see that in a run. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, I believe it's to prevent you from grabbing partially into a wall. I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, yeah, it basically pops you back in bounds once you've popped out of bounds a little bit, like if you're climbing out of bounds. Right, so I want to go uh, like as far into the wall as possible when I grab the ledge, and it'll just pop you up instantly, which skips the climbing animation. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be like, well, depending on how many you go for, four or five of those in the run. Well, there's one that voids you out if you fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not going for that one. Oh, sorry. So it's five or six, and it'll be five, because, yeah, don't go for that one. It's not worth the quarter second or whatever. Ooh, found the tree. <laughs> that one hurt. And fortunately, Alberto has plenty of health here. He's got two and a half hearts, and each whack from these guys does half a heart, but you also just you can avoid getting whacked entirely. Um, but if you were to die in here in the Sacred Grove, then it would take you all the way back to the beginning of the chase, even if you died right at the end of the fight that he's approaching. And it's... Uh, that's, ba that's run over if that happens. That's just completely run over. That's, and I've had it happen before once. Or no, twice. I've had it happen before. It's not good yeah, when it happens. It's happened to us all. It's, it's like a... I mean, depending on when you die, it can be up to like a five-minute time loss. I think Anarakis had that happen in a Goron Mines RTA race recently. Oh. In like the Lava Dash tournament? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is really sad when it happens. You can't really, like, you can try to avoid them, but sometimes they just hit you and it's just like, you can't, you, you can't help it. That's why you really honestly, want help. Honestly, in my experience, when you're trying to avoid death in this game is when you die most. <laughs> yep. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'm going to avoid them. And then they hit me because they just teleport to you and hit you. Yep. Shout they out to the Kargorox. The Shadow Kargorox in the outdoor boss key area of Palace of Twilight. Oh, they killed you? Oh, yep. unfortunate. Half a heart. I was literally claw shotting a heart and one whacked me. Oh, mid claw shot. That's, yep. that's just brutal. Yep, there's the Skull Kid fight, uh, just three easy rounds, and now, uh, well, now we get to the hardest part of the run, Alberto's got to do this really tough Master Sword puzzle. Oh yeah, this is the hardest puzzle in the game. This is the infamous Master Sword puzzle. Luckily, I already know out. the the solution. You all, re you're cheating. Well, I didn't Everybody say this else is a no cheat speedrun. Just because I said this is an any percent speedrun doesn't mean it's a no cheat speedrun. You gotta Ugh. remember. Trying to get these two frame uh, senses presses that do nothing, yeah. they just look cool. Absolutely nothing. Uh, someone in chat asks why you're not playing the HD version. Uh, why, as in, be, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure either, which is why I didn't. They're, they're because different. Because I'm not running it. Uh, because, I don't know. I've run HD before. I have. Um, this is just what I decided to do, I guess. I mean, they both, oh. I think, have their cool, unique differences. Like, they both are cool in their own respects, I would say. Like, th there's, like, HD, I think, is uh, a lot lighter on the big, big tricks in the run, uh, for one. But it is longer, and that means you have to do more tedious sections. Like, you, you have to go all the way through... A, an extra twilight and you have to go all the way through uh a lot well more uh, i guess you'd still skip the intro but um, well you, you do some of the to... intro you have to get the zora armor eventually right yeah so there's more you have to do in hd well that you skip in in gamecube so gamecube is a faster version of the game so i think they both have unique characteristics yeah it's not really a matter of which one's faster or slower they're just different speed runs yeah they're just different so um, I will also say HD historically has not been as uh, as um, as run as as GameCube. GameCube is like historically the most run version. Yeah, GameCube um, is definitely the more competitive. Of the two. Yeah, more competitive for sure. Yeah, more active. Yeah, but there are HD runners um, active at any time. In fact, I think one's online right now. Oh, nice! Is it delighted? Uh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So Delighted is going for the full sweep in, in uh, Twilight Princess HD. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so re regarding going to the first dungeon, uh, well, actually, I wanted to talk about the Master Sword a little bit first. The reason that Al got the Master Sword here is, like, fourfold or fivefold. There are a lot of really nice things that the, having the Master Sword early does for us. Uh, the major, or like, I think the most important one is that it lets you transform and warp at will. Normally, in, until you get the Master Sword after beating three dungeons, you can only warp when you're in Twilight's and already wolf. But now he can transform whenever. That's going to save him a whole lot of time. Um, also on warping. Two, uh, the Master Sword does double damage that the Ordin Sword does. So it's going to be really useful for combat. Um, three, having the Master Sword will allow Al to get into Lake Bed early without the Zora armor. Uh, if you don't have the Master Sword and you enter Lake Bed early, then you save warp. You just are in the water still and you drown. But if you happen to have the Master Sword, then it warps you to land and you don't drown. Which is very, very convenient for us. Um, I think there's one other thing about the Master Sword that I'm currently forgetting, but we'll get there in a minute, I guess. I'll, I'll probably do that. Uh, so really, really important item, and so nice that it's really convenient to the route. Um, now, as for going to the first dungeon, Al is going to go to the first dungeon to get the boomerang now. It's going to be a really important item, and you'll, you'll see why soon. Uh, but he doesn't need to beat the dungeon. The only thing that beating Forest Temple unlocks is, uh, you know, if you do it in addition to beating Farron Twilight, you can leave Farron and go to the rest of Hyrule Field. But there's a way around that that's very simple that just uses the boomerang. So he's just going to go and get the boomerang. And in total, there are nine dungeons in this game. Uh, Al's only going, going to complete five of them. He's going to enter two others to get the dungeon item and then leave. And then two of them he's going to skip completely, just never going to see it. Heading back to the area that you remember as being. We've, we've been here before. Yep. Yep, this is where we did the EMS. And it would be really convenient if we could do EMS in such a way that we killed these shadow beasts, like, in addition to getting up and into the Sacred Grove. Because then we'd just warp back here instead of backtracking through all of Farron, but it doesn't work that way. If you kill all of them, then um, you get warped back to the ground, and then you can't go to the Sacred Grove. Um... So, we're coming up on probably the most complicated trick in the entire run. It's going to look like some nonsense. This is the second instance of back in time in the run. And I'm going to explain what each part is doing after Al's already done it, but I'm just going to kind of narrate as it happens first. Uh, so, just as he enters in Forest Temple, he's going to do a jump attack out of bounds and save the game so that he has a save in Forest Temple that he can return to. And on this jump attack out of bounds, just like at the beginning, he's going to void and reset on the same frame with a setup from the save prompt. And that will bring him to back in time. He has control on the title screen, just like before. But this time, instead of making a save on the title screen, he is going to load a different save, the one that he made in Orden on the title screen. And that will wrong warp him into the King Boblin fight. Why it does that is like a complicated computer science layers <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. And it doesn't really matter. The point is, as he starts the fight, he's going to skip the cutscene and reset. And what that did is it set a flag saying that he's in a boss fight. Um, but it didn't actually clear the flag when he reset. That's something that it's just a glitch. They probably should have uh, made that clear. But it, that's not how it works. So uh, now the game thinks he's in a boss sequence. And that flag happens to also control how many monkeys he has in the forest temple. Oh, no. Yeah, I missed um, the nut. It's okay. We can we can we can back this up. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so he's not gonna have to go around the forest temple and collect monkeys. Uh, there are a bunch of ways to do that to, to set this flag, which we call EBF. Um, that's the. It's a really complicated way to do it, but it's the fastest way. Um, it, we could have used any boss sequence, but wrong warping into one happened to be fast. Uh, so yeah, I unfortunately missed that nut throw, but. Nancy, it looks like she's being nice. Turn left, please. Turn left. Turn no. left. Please turn left. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, you know it's bad when the camera pans out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so as Al opens this next door, you'll see that he has a ton of monkey friends. Look at all these monkeys. Where'd they come from? Mashing for a frame for roll here. Oh, nope, didn't get it. Oh no, I didn't save one frame. Does that actually save a frame? You don't really go anywhere. Well, I believe because you moved for a frame. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't even go for that one. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. It's one frame. Yeah. Of time save. And uh, we were talking about how the Master Sword does double damage to the Orden Sword earlier. Um, in this fight with Ook, Al is going to be able to one-cycle him just with a simple combo. Whereas if he had the Orden Sword, he wouldn't be able to do that. So that was what, three hops? Four hops? Yeah, not bad. The best he can do is two hops. Yeah. There's RNG in which direction he's facing at the beginning of the fight, too. And also how, excuse me, how soon he hops when you get close to him. So... Kind of silly RNG fight, but it never gets... Well, it usually doesn't get very bad. Usually, yeah. This is not really... It's, it's usually the spider that we were just dealing with earlier. Yeah. Is the major RNG part of this segment. Yeah, this is the sub-30 boomerang, which is, to me, pretty good. You can get a yeah. 28. This is going to be a 29. Yeah, I think the fastest I know of is like a 28, I think it was sub-2830, but just barely by a second or two, and that's just nuts. That's an insane yeah. time. I mean, how close do you have to play to some of us? Like, within, like, two or three seconds for that? Like, Well, I don't remember off the top of my head. But, yeah, I, I haven't gotten close. that. I think that was Demon. Uh, I think I've got a 28.4, like a high 28.4x. Yeah, it's just so much RNG has to go your way, and then also, of course, the gameplay. Um... So yeah, as mentioned before, Al is now just leaving Forest Temple. He doesn't need anything else here. And he will warp away to South Farron again. Notice that Al just warped by calling Midna. That's the only time in the run that he's going to do that. Well, I did it once from, uh, from oh, the sorry, Sacred yeah. Grove. So it's this second time. Second, but last time that he's going to do that. Yes, no more after this. Yeah. Um, and now we get to see the power of the Gale Boomerang. Uh, so like I said before, there's a big old trigger uh, leaving Farron, where Midna says, no, you need to go clear the Farron Twilight and beat the Forest Temple before you leave. But the Boomerang gives us the power of the LJA wherever we want, um, because Link automatically targets the Boomerang, and when Link does a jump attack, when he's targeting something that is over a void or over ground higher than his feet, he will get an extra long jump attack. Just get some extra speed. Doesn't give him any extra height. Speed. So Val stands in a very specific position here and targets in the right place. You can just jump right over the trigger. Uh, one thing you probably notice uh, is that when, bef well, it, it happened really quickly, but before pulling the boomerang, I went into first person, and that actually makes you uh, pull the boomerang a lot faster. Yeah. So I do that yeah. for all first-person items. Uh, claw Shot as well, coming up later. An exception is the bow if you already have it in your hand, but this speedrun doesn't even get the bow. Nope, we don't get it. I th Actually, I'm not even sure about Slingshot. We never use Slingshot. Well, I don't know. Or like, we don't never. We only use it a couple of times. We at the beginning and never in first person. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. So I'll just did another LJA with Boomerang out of bounds so that it was over a void. And he did that to skip a mailman trigger. Um, this run ideally never hits the postman. Uh, there's only what? There's only one more postman skip in any percent, right? Uh, right well, this I will do that again if I fail this next trick coming up. True. Uh, yeah. So we mentioned before that there are single frames where you can input something and get like a, an early jump that saves a second or something like that. Uh, well, there's one frame for input after or like between two cutscenes that I was coming up on where if he gets a jump, he can void out and save a minute on the run. And if he misses it, then he will just have to be warped away. He has a forced warp back to Farron, and it will cost him one. So he's got a good visual cue. Uh, I will shut up so he can pay attention. Alrighty, see if I can get it.
I did get it. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. That's very important to get that. Yeah. So if he had not gotten that, then there would have been an automatic mid to trigger saying, hey, you need to warp back to Farron so you can warp the bridge. But fortunately, he can't warp the bridge, so it would be just a total time loss. Um, but he didn't hit that because he got the trick. So now, uh, again, because he can't warp the bridge, he's got to find another way to get over to Kakariko. So he's going to dig up this rupee and do an LJA with the rupee onto this fence. The importance of the rupee is that it will stop his momentum on the fence so that uh, he has time to input a roll before Link just slides off. There we go. Um, and he can just roll right over the fence. It is called a rupee roll. Who knows why? It's a total mystery. Um, then he will not bonk off. Ow! Um, oh, we're fine. I knew that was going to be okay. It was fine. Not even scared. And then I've LJA never right over before. the What's that? You've bonked off before? I've never had that happen. Oh, yeah. yeah I didn't yeah. know you could do that. An insult to injury, you bonk off and fall into the trigger and fail Gorge Void after oh. having gotten it. So that was really scary then. <laughs> it was a bit spooky, yeah. Um, now Al's got to do something kind of weird. He's going to run around the perimeter of this area. Um, nice, that was a fast one. Um, and the reason for that is that there's a... Uh, because the Tame to Fona flag, the Tame to Fona flag, either way, uh, <laughs> was set at the beginning of the run with the back-in-time save, uh, the game expects him to want to fight King Bolden 1 soon, and the trigger for that is right at the entrance of Kakariko. But there is no reason to ever fight King Bolden 1 in this speedrun. Um, or at least for this route of this speedrun. So he's just running around it. And now that he's warping, uh, opened up the warp portal in Kakariko, I'm just making a lot of spoonerisms today. <laughs> um, he'll leave, because uh, he has to take that forced warp we were talking about earlier. And he didn't want to take it before because he would have had no fast way of getting back here. Uh, but now that he's opened up the warp portal, he can run back and hit it. And the reason he's got to hit it is that that gives us map warping mentioned before that he's not going to uh, warp by calling Midna first very much in the run or any at all anymore. Uh, what he's going to do instead is warp by opening up the map and then uh, pressing the Z button to show the portals and warp like that. And that's a bit faster. Uh, the important, the, the, the real importance of this though is that this will allow him to warp the Sky Cannon later. It's a really awkward thing that you have to hit that trigger and then warp away. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but at, at the same time, there's no way back across the gorge anyway, so you would have to warp back here anyway. It's just if you didn't need to hit that, you would um, you would be able to warp just straight from Kakariko instead of running back out there. But if you didn't need to hit that, you'd be running the bite route because that would be faster. Uh, yeah, so Al's now in South Farron again. He's going to open up Lanayru now. Uh, so he's doing the exact same trick, Farron Escape, with the Boomerang LJA. And this time he's going to run straight instead of running right. Okay. May notice I'm... Uh, it's way faster in, in these big open spaces in Hyrule Field to be Wolf, because Wolf moves uh, much faster than Link, but only on these giant open areas. So it's faster to transform into Wolf because Wolf moves faster. In general, Wolf moves faster than human Link. Yeah, there are... So it takes about three seconds to transform uh, each direction. So a total of six or six seconds for a double transformation when you're crossing some area. And in these big open areas, like Al said, uh, Wolf Link moves a lot faster. It's 44 speed and pretty much constantly as opposed to Human Link's 32.9 uh, speed, and it's fluctuating across his roll animation. Um, also, Al's just gonna hop through this gate, doesn't really exist. <laughs> um, so, uh, but in some smaller areas, Wolf Link's speed is capped at 33, so it's not really worth transforming because Human is essentially the same speed. Um, and now Al's gonna be going for a trick called Pillar Clip. Oh, never mind the sky being green, that's totally normal. Uh, if you look <laughs> outside right now, the sky might be green, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, so Al is in Lake Hylia, having entered uh, the Lanayru region. And because he's here, it's very convenient for him to just go down to Lake Bed Temple. He hasn't done any of the things that normally are required. He doesn't have Zora armor, he doesn't have water bombs. But what he can do is sink down with the iron boots and uh, use a pillar to clip himself out of bounds and uh, enter from out of bounds. See you in a sec.
to work. Nice. Yeah, very nice. I didn't even have to wait for the load up. And then, yeah, it's just going to tap the iron boots to move horizontally in the water, which you can't normally do with, uh, with the hero's clothes. You hit the load zone out of bounds. And now he's going to save warp. As I mentioned earlier, um, save warping here with the master sword just brings you up to the land. It skips the whole entrance tunnel, which is really convenient because you wouldn't be able to survive that entrance tunnel on a tiny amount of air. Well, they had the full air meter, actually. It's actually really crazy that we can reach this dungeon this early. Yeah, it is. That's a pretty big sequence break. And you can only do that in Twilight, because if we were in Twilight, the water would be too high. We wouldn't be able to make it without with our air gauge. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the most important things about this trip to Lake Bed is that he's going to get Uku so that he can walk back here later without having to draw. So here we see some more LJAs. Just crossing these platforms, this skips having bomb arrows. Though you don't even really need bomb arrows to do this, you can just do it with bomb. We're supposed to have Zora armor at this part, but uh, we are not going to be getting Zora armor at all in this run. Yep. Well, unless something goes terribly wrong. Whoops, I well. accidentally did the whole escort. Oops. I believe yeah. this lake bed route with turning the the stairs is only like two seconds faster than the other route. Uh, something like that, yeah. I, I don't know the actual time. It does look cooler, though. Yeah, it does because of the jump that he's about to do. Hopefully the tech titan won't bother you. He's just stuck behind the wall. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, nice. Yeah, there's Uku. This is how he's going to get back later, because uh, he can't actually beat the dungeon right now. He doesn't have a way to kill Morpheal. Um, but while he's here, he can also get the claw shot, which will be useful. Uh, mostly in Snow Peak. Alright, this is going to be a, a double. Yeah, I got the double LJ. Oh. I believe I aimed that a little too oh. low. Yeah, that's... That is unfortunate. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see the collision up there. But, uh, so like I said earlier, LJAs work if you're targeting something that's over a surface higher than Link's feet or uh, over a void to, to get a full speed one. There's actually a whole range. It's, it's not quite that simple. Um, yeah, the boomerang, unfortunately, wasn't quite over that awning. There yeah, I should have recognized it. Yeah, that particular one, like because of the lighting, it's really hard to see up there. Um, so now, this is the back door to the Deku Toad room that Al's entering right now. Normally, if you just enter this, then nothing happens. You're staring at a gate. But because he set that flag earlier to say he was in a boss sequence, uh, he can just look up and start the fight. Because normally what you do is you enter from the other side, you have to watch a little cutscene, and then you can look up to start the fight. But that cutscene is skipped because of the flag. And I'm just going to kill all these little tadpoles. And he's going to try to one-cycle Deku Toad by timing 10 slashes. And expand. Very nice. They're not, there's not too much time of leniency for that. I, I don't actually know the number. I've heard people spew out like, you know, 7 frames, 10 frames, something like that. But it, it feels like it's a little more lenient than that, but it's, it's, it's pretty tight. What's really nice about it is that you can kind of, you can space it out in like twos because it takes five, five, five total double hits. And basically if you mash the B button, the first two hits come out on the first frame of it. Like the one after the first one comes out in the first frame available. So what I'm really yeah. doing is I'm mashing B and then stopping mashing and then mashing again. I'm alternating that five times. Yeah. So the main thing to worry about there is not mashing B for slightly too long to make Link start the third part of a combo. Because if you yeah. do that, then it's just too slow and it won't work. You just want the first two each time. Yeah. And you can do it with single slashes too. Kind of it's just way. harder to do it that way. It's harder. Because you have to time five additional inputs instead of just five total. You'd have to time all ten. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just personal preference. Uh, I do it the same as you. Oh, okay, okay. 
Um, All right, this yeah, trick now, coming up can crash my game yes. if it fails. Got to be careful mm -hmm. with that one. Um, yeah, so he's now Uku'd out of lake bed and can now use Uku whenever he wants to to go back to lake bed, which he will do um, soon after he gets the means to kill Morfiel, but not, not immediately. But he does need to open up the rest of Lanayru, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more on the Kargarok play. But to do that, he's got to look at this scary grass. Ah! Um, ah! And then he's got to kill this Kargarok, which is really easy to do, but he's going to do it in a hard way that's a bit faster. Uh, that, again, risks crashing the game. I'm going to stop so you can hear. Oh my goodness, that was very scary. Oh god. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so the game didn't crash. That was Very nearly didn't crash. That was close. Yeah, so uh, if you drown a Bulblin, or if a Bulblin touches water, then it dies. Uh, so he was just luring the Kargarok into the water. It's a pretty awkward trick to get the Kargarok close enough to you that it goes in the water, but far enough that it doesn't grab you. Um, that, was a, <laughs> that was a near miss. We take those. And now he's just going to go out of bounds um, using this collision. It's essentially the same as Pillar Clip. The collision pushes you out of bounds. And uh, if you look at the mini-map, you can see that this will let him take a more direct path to the end of this uh, area, rather than zigging and zagging in the middle. It does throw off how bright the area is. It does, yeah. Very interesting lighting in this area. Lots of balloon. Um, yeah, so I actually wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the route for the run as a whole, because we've just kind of been saying what's going on as we go and not really why we're doing it. Um, the goal for any percent, obviously, is to beat the game. And in this game, we don't have anything like a credits warp. We have to go beat Hyrule Castle and beat the final bosses. And to do that, to get into final or into Hyrule Castle, you have to beat Pals of Twilight. To get there, you've got to get through Arbiter's Grounds to get to the Mirror uh, Chamber and beat... Uh, City in the Sky. We don't need to beat uh, Snow Peak Ruins or Temple of Time. We'll talk a little bit more about later. And to get to Arbiter's Grounds, we'll need to beat Lake Bed, uh, which again, Al can't beat yet. He's going to need something to beat Morfeel because uh, he can't breathe underwater right now. And to get to Lake Bed uh, and to be able to complete it and have the game in the right state uh, to beat Midna's Desperate Hour, he's going to have to beat Lanayru Twilight, and to do that, he's got to beat the Elden Twilight. So basically now, he's got the boomerang and the master sword, and he's opening up the whole map. And once he does that, he's going to get to work on the Twilights, and we'll really see more progress in that uh, chain of requirement. And TP has a reputation for, you know, it's the longest 3D Zelda uh, any percent run until Tomb Kingdom comes out. Um, and you know, it's got a reputation for not having humongous skips like some of the others, but TP actually does have some really big sequence breaks. It's just that they were found a long time ago, and the game is pretty long, so there's still a lot left. Um, but yeah, he's he's skipping a lot of hours of of stuff here. Well, skipping cutscenes on its own skips a lot of time. Just pressing that, the start button twice. Yeah, yeah, cutscene skips in this game for the most part are just pressing the start button. So but this now, is actually because, a really long game, so... Yeah. Uh, so now because Al got Gorge Void earlier and was able to open up the Kakariko portal, he's able to just warp straight there, and he will get the vessel. Um, I haven't been looking at a timer. What vessel time are you getting? This is a 47, a low 47. Nice. Yeah, that's that's awesome for, for a marathon. I mean, that's just awesome in general. Yeah. Not trying to be like, that's awesome for a marathon. Well, the world record has a 46. And has a 45 what? has been, oh, 46. You got a 46. Well, you, you are the world record. You have a 46. Okay. I, I don't remember my times, I believe you. Oh. <laughs> Generally, 46 is like uh, considered really good. 47 is considered good. And then 45, it's considered insane. Yeah, 45 has been done by a few people. And I am not among that number. Nimzo, Marco, and Demon have all done it. And it's just an insane early game to get that. 
Um, so yeah, Al's now doing the Elden Twilight, as I mentioned earlier. He's got to do that for his whole sequence of events. Got to go around and kill all the bugs. And in the basement, he's doing a strat so that the bugs don't run away from him and scamper about. Yeah, but we did do this in the wrong order. Uh, this is another example of having the master sword being useful. You're only yeah. supposed. I just did this area from the back. I'm supposed to come from the front, but I actually completely avoided the front by uh, transforming into a human and then just clipping into that chimney. Uh, you can't do that as wolf. It only works as human. That allows us to skip the entire sanctuary that you're supposed to do. Yeah. That we're coming out from scene. behind. Yeah. And this next bug is pretty simple. He's just going to bonk a wall and the bug will come right to him. And you'll notice that Al hesitates after the tier looks like it's formed. Because it's not actually collectible yet. And uh, until like a second or two after it forms visibly. And then he hasn't actually officially collected it until Wolf Link turns blue and it makes the sound effect. And if you leave an area before the Wolf Link turns blue, then you don't actually get the tier. You have to go back in and get it, which is a whole pain. Yeah, while we're waiting for the tier, we have time to do other things. So we're usually collecting rupees in that time. You can, uh, the, the game tries to give you text for each new value of rupee you get uh, on each, how do you say this, on each <laughs> time playing the game. So anytime you save warp, it, it gets reset and you get rupee text again. Um, so Al side hopped into that rupee to skip the text, but if you get the rupee and then are falling for long enough or like aren't on the ground for long enough afterwards, then it skips it and just gives it to you. Was well, trying to get that green, but eh, it's just a green. Oh, so close. Oh, well. It probably wasn't worth it anyway. There's a big trick coming up right here. Yep. Yeah, so uh, this Twilight, uh, there was a wolf, I'm sorry, the human clip at the beginning, uh, which used the Master Sword, and that was uh, kind of sequence break. The rest of this has just been, you know, essentially things you could do in a casual playthrough, but uh, really fast. The next thing I was going to do, though, is skip a long cutscene inside the bomb house by collecting a tier early. Now we'll be quiet so we can pay attention. All right, good. Very nice. Yeah, so you're not supposed to be able to get that bug before it enters the bomb house, but if you kill it before it does, then the bomb house just kind of blows up without blowing up, and then you get all the tears instantly instead of having to watch a whole long cutscene. And all it takes is a very precise jump on a railing that can be done much more easily as human with the boomerang, but it's a bit slower to do that. By a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, despite the length of this run, we do go for some pretty optimized strats. Um, it's tough to say the entire run is optimized, just given that there's a, a lot of RNG in it and it is a long run, but um, we, we do know how to optimize each run. Nice circle. Yeah, <laughs> Wolf Link's movement is kind of wonky. Uh, he has to turn before moving in a direction. Like, he has to be facing that direction to be moving in that direction. He can't move sideways. Oh, here's a quick climb. Oh, yep. There's another one. Oop. The next two we'll see will be in Snoopy.
Interesting. I don't think I've seen anyone dash cancel that before. I guess that times your dashes for the steps down here. Yeah, I well, was oh. going to until I got hit. Yeah. But yes, if I had not gotten hit there, yeah, it just makes it so that you don't lose. There, there's no chance of losing your dash on that last jump. Hmm. Which is just a small thing. Yeah. In general, my forte with speedrunning has been like movement stuff, which is small optimizations. Uh, and for Twilight Princess, my struggle has been the big tricks. Alright, and right around the seven minute mark, Al's gonna be finishing this Twilight. Actually, how long was this segment? Uh, I'll tell you in a second, when, oh, when well, I finish. Yeah. <laughs> right. I guess I asked that a little early, didn't I? That, that, that I think, was a sub-7, like maybe 650? Uh, yeah, 653. I am ahead nice. of my personal bus right now. Nice. Uh, oh, your PB fails some um, bomb house Oh, skip? bomb house skip, yep. yep. That was yeah. the only trick I failed in my PB. The only big major trick that I failed in my PB. So because I did not fail that, I'm ahead. So... PB precipice. This is like shows you like this is most of my runs. They kind of go like this, where the, most of them, uh, maybe they're they're a little behead or a, a little ahead or a little behind. A little behead. Behead. Uh oh. Don't behead anybody. I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> yeah, behead or behind. Oh no, Monka <laughs> Tioa. Um. Yeah. Now Al's gonna go open up Lanayru, and to do that, he's got to warp this meteor. That's the whole reason he had to beat Elven Twilight. And he transformed into human because uh, he's going to be able to skip a cutscene with a dead fish later. And it's able to do that as a wolf, but uh, only really reliable to do that um, for a task. He's just going to do it as human. And that'll allow him to skip some in the text too. Frame perfect he side off here. Side Can off. I get yeah. it? Can I get it? Oh, let's go. Nice. Very good. I just kind of mashed for that. It comes out of a, a fade out, and there's no visual key for it because the screen is literally black. Yeah. And I believe loading times are also are in like random, so you can even if you tried to time it, I believe it'd be random the timing. Yeah. So it's not really possible to time that. I'm just gotta yeah, mash lo for it. Yeah, load load times are indeed variable. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone. Uh, times that one. <laughs> I'd be very impressed. I don't know. I don't know how you could, honestly. Well, <laughs> it's not very precise, but for the one entering the rooftops, like where you skip the text, or sorry, skip the cutscene and then hit A for the jump attack, I use the sound of my disc in the Wii as a cue. Uh, oh, I've heard tells... people say that. I've heard people say they do stuff like that. Yeah, because it tells you when the next area is loading. True. Just a little clunking around. I should I should pay attention to that more. Uh, so now I've got our second Twilight, which really is the third Twilight in the game, but he skipped one of them. The Lanera Twilight. This one, the, the Twilights, the purpose of the Twilights in the game is to introduce you to each of the areas, each of the three main map areas. And so to do that, the bugs are kind of scattered around the entire area, and Lanayru is kind of huge. So Al's going to be going all over the place for this one, um, and doing a lot of running. Yep, a lot of woofing it... and barking. That's correct. Um, but that'll just make it all the nicer later when, after the Twilight, you can still warp because you have the Master Sword. Ooh. Donks. Yep, we're getting some money. And this is the part of the run where I actually really want these RNG rupees because later there's a chest with a red rupee that I want to skip in Arbiters. Yeah, it'll save like six seconds to skip that. Which would be pretty nice. And 44. Um, I don't know if you're on pace for it. 
I, it, I guess it depends on the grass in the next area. Um, another trick coming up here. Yeah, this one's called Waterfall Side Hop. He's going to have a, a small frame window to do a side hop at the top of this waterfall to get to an area. I get it? Oh, nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, it's a three frame window for that trick. And unfortunately, so there are easier ways to get up here um, since he has the Master Sword and Iron Boots. But that is the fastest, well, <laughs> that's the fastest human viable way. Can't you claw shot? Yeah, if you watch a task, the task will claw shot directly to the vines instead of side hopping. It's ridiculous. And then, oh. Okay, that, that wasn't so bad. Those bugs yeah. are kind of a nuisance. He kind of just avoided me. He dodged me. Good dodging yeah. skills. Good jump to the lily pad, though. Yeah, there's some platforming there. It turned into a Mario game there. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 51. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, there's still, there's still a couple of these to get. We need to get to uh, 160, I believe. Yeah, so if you're at 60 by the end of this Twilight, or then sorry, you're 60. completely set. Yeah, not 160, 60. Sorry, so just 10 more. So we're getting right. actually kind of close. We are getting pretty close. Yeah, and it's possible to get a blue from the grass over here, though you'd have to skip the text. Um, and then, of course, you can count on the one. I don't know, do you usually skip the red? Uh, not, it, not usually. Usually I get it. Uh-huh. Because, well, yeah, let's see what you get here. Nothing. Nothing? Okay, yeah, that's... It's possible, but it would be kind of more. If you ever notice me B-attacking, so sometimes I press A to dash, sometimes I B-attack, there are times where I can't dash because the dash takes time to refill. In that case, I'll press B because it's a little faster than walking slowly as Wolf. And saves yeah. a very small amount of time. Yeah, there's a mechanic called dash canceling that I didn't mention earlier. Uh, that I mentioned earlier, but didn't actually go into. Um, as Wolf, if you dash, then there's a set timer that has to run out before you can dash again. And, you know, that just means you do your full dash, then you can dash again. But if you stop, like, holding the control stick forward, for example, or in a full direction, then you'll start moving really slowly, but then you can't dash again until that timer is up. But you can reset that timer automatically if you somehow stop your dash within 10 frames by doing something like bonking or jumping off a ledge or uh, doing a B attack. So there are going to be times where Al does a dash and then B attacks right away. Actually, that's going to happen a lot in just a minute. Yes. Um, or he, he, he does a dash, then B attacks right away to cancel the dash so he can do it again. Um, and that's just slightly faster movement for certain areas. That's actually a really awkward Shadow Beast fight there. You gotta be really careful because there's this median in the middle that's designed to interrupt your attack. You have to hit them both, the last two, with a minute charge or else the last one alive roars and brings all the rest to life. So you gotta make sure that that minute charge hits both of them, but that median is designed to make you bonk so that you can't hit the second one. So you gotta be really careful how you do that so you don't bonk the median. A tough game. Yeah. So here is our dash canceling fiesta. Um, Al's just gonna dash cancel all the way through Castle Town because Wolf Link's speed is capped so low here that this is the fastest way to move. Or it's a, it's not actually so much the cap; it's just that the dash speed is reduced drastically as soon as the initial dash is over. Manip there for that bug. So yeah, I deliberately yeah. bonked into the corner to try to get the bug to fall down, uh, which is faster than him circling around up top a few times. But you have to hit him in the right way, and I I don't think it's been decomped, but I suspect there's some RNG to it, but there's been a debate. I, I, I disagree, but I don't know. Hmm. Some people think it's consistent. I don't think it is. I don't think we've decomped it yet, though. No, so recently Taka did decomp the Watchtower bug, though, and he said that it's angle that it flies out at 
is um, directed by both the player's angle or like Link's angle to the bug and an RNG component that can turn the bug as much as, well, okay, he said not to quote him on this. Some, some small angle amount um, that it can be just RNG. So I uh, would guess that that bug is the same way, though that is just a guess. Yeah, so it's basically some skill, some RNG. Yeah. Oh, April there. Oh. <laughs> Watch those wings. Bonking here is not good. Do not want to bonk. Well, you do want to bonk once. How about he can bonk when I say he can bonk? How about that? Yeah, that's it. Who's the one carrying the controller? Not Link. Though sometimes I feel like it is Link. Especially when you're Wolf. Yeah. All oh right. no, I bonked. Oh, oh no. no, what a big mistake. Oh no. Well, I, think we I should, should just continue. Give up. Don't do it again. Okay, I'll just give up. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I, I just give up. It's too hard. Game's too hard. <laughs> Yeah, that was deliberate, and that respawns us right here, which is very convenient, because it's next to the second to last bug. Yep. Such cute little bugs. I'm glad they're all that way. Yeah, me too. If I had to fight a giant bug, that'd be really scary. That would be really scary, especially if you were, like, in the water, that bug's element and not yours. Exactly. I want to fight him on my terms. I if you were fighting a bug at all. Yeah, which, that's to say- Oh no! Oh no! Alright, well, I don't have a kazoo here, but usually you have a kazoo, so I will imitate it. Do, 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 Alright, hope I did well. Yep, very, very well. Oh, that was a- Oh, never mind, sorry. I thought that was a weird angle. I just, I was looking at a weird angle. Yeah, this fight, we want to manip the bug. Uh, he doesn't attack you until he's on camera, but he also moves, swims around for a random amount of time before attacking. So sometimes he can move past the camera before attacking, but we met, we want him to attack us. Well, we there's only certain positions that work for this fight to try to, okay, a lot of that happened very quickly. Uh, <laughs> so oh, <laughs> I'll explain all of it. So. There's only some positions where you want to do a double back hop. So you want to be on the long ways part of the... Of, you want to be at the edge of the raft and then back hop twice so you can attack him again. That only works if you're at like the long ways part at the edge. So uh, I want to manip him so he doesn't come on... He doesn't attack me until he's on screen. So I, I basically aim the camera. And where I aim the camera matters a lot. So uh, anyway, I did that to get him to attack me from the correct angle. And then at the very end, I deliberately bonked him instead of uh, jumping around a million times to uh, to attack all of his legs. Bonking just cancels that animation and ends the fight instantly. Speaking of turning the camera out, not a lot of people know this, but if at the end of the fight when you collect the tier, if you turn the camera about 90 degrees either direction from the direction you had it, then you'll save like most of a second on lag. I did hear that and I'm very surprised, but I guess I'm not surprised. At the same I time. did check it against multiple runs. I mean, you can check it on your own console, so maybe, you know, maybe it's different. But, um, so here's a really big sequence break coming up. Uh, Al has just cleared the linear twilight, and he's in Zora's domain. Or I, I'm sorry, I I forgot the 80% round. <laughs> sorry, not a big sequence break yet. Not yet. Next time. We do have the biggest frame perfect trick in the run coming up. E uh, yeah. That's true. So, yeah, I mentioned before that Al needs to get something to fight uh, Morpheal. And he's got the claw shot, that's necessary, but he doesn't have a way to breathe underwater, so you might be thinking, he needs to get the Zora armor, except that we've already told you that. He's not going to do that. What he's going to do instead is get bombs, and those are going to allow him to uh, breathe underwater. First, he's got to get this Howling Stone, though, because uh, to finish the game, you need to use Ending Blow on Ganon, which is the first hidden skill you can't beat the game. You can get all the way to the final input of the game and then not be able to beat it uh, if you don't get any blow. So he's got to howl here to get a wolf because uh, the one wolf that automatically spawns and gives you any blow normally in a casual playthrough <laughs> only spawns if you beat Fair and Twilight, which Al didn't do. Um, but yeah, he's going to get... jam session. 
wolf hands. Wolf hands. Um, but yeah, so Owl needs to get some bombs in order to fight Morpheal. He's just going to blow her up. Well, not really, but he's going to use them to breathe underwater. And there are three bomb bags that you can get in this game. One is from doing Isa's minigame. One is from freeing a Goron underwater, which you need bombs to do, so that you'd be the first one normally. And one is by uh, buying a bomb bag from the Barnes, which you can only do after beating Goron Mines, which you may have noticed just isn't featured in this speedrun. Um, so he's actually going to get that Goron bomb bag as his main bomb bag. And again, to do that, he's got to get another bomb to blow up the rock that the Goron is in. And normally you need a water bomb to be able to do that because the Goron is underwater. But what I was going to do is get some normal bombs. Um, and he's going to do a very precise trick called Norgor, uh, where he pulls a bomb frame perfectly uh, as he jumps into the water, and that makes it sink. And then the bomb will continue sinking during a cutscene that he's activated at the same time. Um, and that gets it down just far enough to blow up the Goron. And to do that, he's going to steal a bomb bag from Isa. He's a thief. Um, so he's just going to talk to Isa and open the map on the same frame, and he's going to warp away as she gives him the temporary bomb bag. And he equips everything on the item. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be quiet. I also got to focus on this one. All right. Very, very important trick. And I got it. Wow. Nice. All right. Well, PV precipice. This can PV. Yep. Yeah, so that's unfortunately a one attempt only trick because of the way the... Well, I guess you... Uh, no. <laughs> you kind of can save and and try again, but it would be really awful. Um, because that cutscene can only be activated once, and that's necessary for the trick, uh, you could save before doing it, and that way you could attempt it multiple times. That's but slower you, than just backing it up if you fail, I'm pretty sure. Well, it is, but also, well, like, especially because if you save, then the Lent Bomb Bag is gone. You'd have to go get it again. So you'd have to save before getting the Lent Bomb Bag, and then each time you attempt it, you'd have to get the Lent Bomb Bag again. You'd have to do a whole Shadow Beast fight and everything. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, uh, now that Al's got the Bomb Bag, uh, and this one is a permanent one, so it won't go away if he saves. Oh, interesting. There's something you can see up there. Um, great movie. Uh, he's got to empty that bomb bag of the normal bombs so that he can fill it with water bombs later so he can fight Morpheal. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. But now he's doing a big sequence break called... Uh, well, big sequence break is early snow peak, and to do that, he's going to activate map glitch. So normally, if you enter this area without the Reekfish scent, which you can't get until way later in the game, um, the snow or, like, the blizzard will void you out. But there's a glitch called map glitch where if you interrupt a warp, and he just did that by calling Midna um, frame perfectly. Then the game deactivates most load zones and all void planes. So he's just running through the snow right now without the Reek Fish scent and is not voiding out. Very, very convenient. Um, I mentioned before that he's going to go into Snow Peak but not beat it. Uh, in Snow Peak, he's got to get the ball and chain because that's going to be necessary for beating Xanth. But the mirror shard that you get from beating Snow Peak is not necessary. And he's just doing that now because it's convenient. He was already in Zora's domain, and the entrance was right here. Did you mention why I'm dropping bombs? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I did. Oh, okay, 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 okay. For anyone who wasn't sure. paying attention, he's dropping bombs so he can fill his bomb bag with uh, water bombs later. That's going to be used for a glitch for beating more people, which we'll explain in a little bit. And uh, he did already howl for the only golden wolf he's going to need to get a hidden skill from, but he needs to howl at this stone as well. Like I said, most load zones and all void planes are deactivated with map glitch. So if he went to dig into the cave to get to Snow Peak right now, he would actually soft lock because he would enter the digging animation but not be able to like hit a load zone and get out of it. But fortunately, the howling stone loads are still active. So by going into and out of that howling stone without, you know, just to say hi to the golden wolf, not to howl at it. Um, he reactivated all his load zones. Yeah, I would soft lock there if I hadn't done that. And he would just dig and just goodbye. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's a sad one. 
I think I've only ever seen one person do that. Um, but I've, I have seen multiple people, including myself, uh, howl twice at that stone instead of only once, just from Hundo Muscle Memory. Or Rando Muscle Memory. I uh, hope I'll I don't void out. Uh, yeah, that would be terrifying if you voided out on the top of this mountain. Yeah, that'd be really bad. I hope I don't void out. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, man, I missed the jump. Oh, no. Uh, I'll just skip a portal fight because he's only going to have to come to Snow Peak once. No need to warp back. Am I on a spiritual journey? Uh, no. Nope. Unfortunately, spiritual journeys are like two seconds slower than not going on spiritual journeys. Look into the eyes of Yeto. They're true beauty. Are you familiar with the emote dies of cringe and dies of bed? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. This won't make any sense. Uh, oh, I will have to check it out after the run. Remind me. A, a dies of Yeto emote now. Oh. <laughs> there was snowboarding, yeah, like but I'm blind. I can't see anything. Yeah, the uh, fog here only lifts if you beat the portal. Uh, that I'll just skip. Fortunately, he's done this a couple of times before, so he's just gonna snowboard on his merry way. It is kind of hard to see, though. He's gonna be looking at some faint visual cues in the background. Just look so at the mountains point. in the background, is what I do. Yeah. Yeah, some people, like, look at the path that they're on. I, I really don't understand that. I've always looked at the mountains. There's a shortcut we're taking here, but it is harder than the regular route. Honestly, it's definitely riskier. There are more places to void out, but I kind of find the shortcut easier just because I've done it more. Like, I, I think they're probably of equal difficulty, really. Yeah, I guess so. Like, whichever one you do more, you get good at it. Oh, almost got the minute tech, tech skip. Very close. Dang. Yeah, that tech skip saves just a tiny amount of time. Yeah, like, if successful. Yeah, it saves like one second. But you have to do two precise jump slashes. Oh, I like that bomb drop. I didn't realize the EX yeah, of the sword put away doesn't actually count. Uh, yeah. Entering the dungeon. Uh, yeah, so Snow Peak is a really broken dungeon in this game. Or, well, of course it's in this game. It's the only game that Snow Peak's in. Um, Al is going to start off by LJing across a, a gap, and then... Oh, you're going for the key. Or not the key, but the ice club. Yeah, I ultimately have decided the other route I'm not the biggest fan of. It takes like two seconds or something, right? Yeah, something like that. It, it's really not a big deal. I, I just didn't know you did this route. Yeah, I um, ultimately switched back. I did try the other route, though. Um, so yeah, he's just going to cross a bunch of gaps, drop a bunch of bombs, uh, clip through some stuff and then go get the uh, the dungeon item. He's skipping just a whole lot of content in this dungeon right now. Yeah, this dungeon is only two minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly kind of amazing how short this dungeon is, even in 100%. Like, we just skip so much. What also helps that we don't beat the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, the longest part of this dungeon is the cutscene at the end. And so now Alice clipped past the freezer, or rather he used the freezer to push him through the door, and then he opened the door on the other side. And I actually want to take that as an opportunity to point out something about doors in this game, that there aren't, there, there is one boss key skip that we can do in TP, but that's it. And there's really, at least with current knowledge, no hope of more boss key skips. Um, because the way doors work in this game is even if you get behind them, there isn't just a load zone, you still have to open them, like Al just did from behind that freezer. So if you get behind a boss key door, you'd still need the boss key to open it and get to the boss room. Um, there's the one exception that we'll see uh, very soon, actually, which is in Lake Bed, where the boss key door actually just leads to a hole, and that's the load zone. Uh, that's very convenient, because the boss key in Lake Bed is really far out of the way. And so now he's got the ball and chain, and now that he's got that, uh, he has a few convenient hundred rupees that he can get, or orange rupees that are worth hundred, rather. Um, you also notice that his bomb bag is empty now. 
very good. Uh, because when he save warps, his equips are going to be shuffled. He had the um, ball and chain and bomb bag equipped when he save warped. And what's he got when he loads the file? I don't actually remember. It's like Uku and Lantern or something. Uh, Uku and I can't remember. Boots. Uku and Boots, there we go. Uh, and that's just a property of having um, the temporary bomb bag removed at the save warp. Very nice side hop. Um, and now he's using Uku to get back to lake bed quickly. He doesn't need to even leave the dungeon. He just warps right back. Very, very good. And now he gets to get his um, his water bombs. We need a chest in this first room. Yep. And now he's just going to backtrack to the main room. Uh, so I mentioned before he was going to get water bombs in order to blow more feel up. That was a joke. Uh, he's not actually going to blow more feel up. He does need a claw shot on a more feel's eye and stab it a bunch, just like you'd do in a casual playthrough. But what the bombs do is let him breathe underwater uh, without the Zora armor. And basically, if you pull out a bomb, it, to pull out a bomb, you have to be wearing the iron boots. But if you equip something over the iron boots to forcibly unequip them uh, while you're pulling the bomb out, then... Uh, it lets you float up with a water bomb, and then if you release it, then it refills your air meter. Um, more on this after the boss key skip. Very nice. No boss key needed. Nope. Skips a whole lot of dungeon. Alright, you viewers at home, watch out. Hiya! Ah! Oh. Ow! What are you doing? Hiya! Ow! Ow! I don't want some Am I doing this the way you do it? Ow. I don't remember. That, that's basically, yeah. Basically how you do it? Fourth yeah, wall yeah break. you're doing it. All right, all right, all right. Watch out, viewers at home. Shooting us with the claw shot. Um, so yeah, this fight is um, a bit fraught because at any point, if something goes wrong, Al can drown. Fortunately, he's done this a lot of times before. He knows what he's doing. Uh, the eye unfortunately juked him there twice. Oh, no. Uh... You got this. Um, pull a bomb if you need to. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Ooh, okay, okay. Nice bomb. There we go. Okay, uh, that... That was really rough, RNG. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that was interesting. <laughs> that was very interesting. So, yeah. Ideally, okay, the, the way the eyeball moves and bounces <laughs> around is just RNG, and Al got pretty unfortunate RNG that the eyeball bounced away from him. Um, and so he just kind of had to flail around until he got it and use a water bomb to refill his air. Y you played that pretty well. Um, I didn't that drown. definitely could have gone a lot worse. I didn't drown. I didn't... I, that's just very bad things could have happened there. Yeah, especially if he got grabbed by a tentacle. Now, unfortunately, that meant he couldn't pull a bomb before the cutscene, so he couldn't rise up during it. So this fight is going to be a little awkward, um, but it still should be doable. Uh, if if he doesn't swim over top of me, that is. Yeah. Make sure you get out of the center of the arena. Or okay. Yeah. All right, we should be fine now. Yeah, this is an awkward fight normally, and this is extra awkward today. Uh, so I was going to do one cycle on Morpheal now, and then sink back to the bottom, and then on the second cycle, he's going to be able to uh, do two cycles of one. And all he's doing to get off of Morpheal quickly is to force unequip the Iron Boots. Launches you right off. All right, we should be fine as long as I get the re-grab. Oh, I thought you were going to get sucked there. All right, all right. <laughs> that was really scary. That was really, okay. really scary. All right, we're good. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, good save. Yeah, Th I that did is do my a, best there. That is a scary part of the run, especially in a marathon setting. Or a race. Yeah, I almost panicked at the start of the fight. Yeah, that is like definitely one of the hardest parts of the run, for sure. Certainly one of the most punishing. Yeah, so I guess I... 
How many bombs did I use? Uh, a lot. Four. All right, I will skip using two bombs and arbiters. Yeah. Yeah, smart. Because I bomb count is tight for this run. You end up if you do everything optimally, you end up with one extra. Well, really two extra if you get one bomb more field. You can do all of that with just one bomb. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I uh, I did not like lots of bombs, but. Yeah, so you, uh, getting, there's another bomb in, uh, chest in City of the Sky, if you need it, but uh, I don't think we'll need it. That's, that's a lot slower than just skipping using two bombs, that saves a few seconds, so. Yeah. We should yeah, be fine bomb for bombs. like 25 seconds. Um, oh, we have a question in chat, where does all the water go? Al, here to come. Uh, it just evaporates. Wow. Some serious sunlight on that water. Yeah. Airflow, something like that. And I was just getting this uh, heart container for safety. It's not strictly necessary to get any of them, but uh, <laughs> I don't think any runners actually go for none of them. Usually people will get at least one. And it used to be that people would get the Arbiter's Grounds one. Or, well, if you're getting an extra safety one outside of Argorak, you'd get the Arbiter's Grounds one. But it's uh, it became a little dicier to get that one when Stallard Skip became a trick in RTA runs. Because I believe you only get one heart container the whole run. I get two. Yeah. So yeah. I just get that one because uh, it's not Arbiter's Grounds when your health is really tight. It's Palace of Twilight. That's when yeah. your health is really tight. Because there's a lot of mandatory damage. There's four hearts of mandatory damage. So you think about it. Wait, I have four hearts. Four yeah. hearts of mandatory damage. Wait, I'm dead. So that means you have to get hearts. Man, like you, you guaranteed have to get hearts if you have four hearts. So that's why I okay. get a, a fifth one. You're saying voiding out during Argrok, falling out of city down to the bridge, and then uh, jumping from the boss key in the palace? Uh, the one voiding out from Argrok, you refill your health anyway after the heart container. It's the right. falling down to the bridge, and then it's voiding out in that room of the boss key, oh, and then jumping yeah, down. Right. And that's four hearts. Because yeah, yeah, voiding out is one heart, and then jumping down is another heart. So, lots of damage later in the run. That's coming up in a while. Yeah, it's pretty nice to have some extra health uh, coming out of Stallard Skip too, just because if you if something goes wrong during Stallard Skip and you only have three hearts there, then you can't do the jump down in City to our, uh, to our Alphos. Yeah, I hope I can show that off. Me too. That would be really cool. I love that jump. Yeah, Al's now dashing through Cancel Town again. Or, uh, dashing through Cancel Town. <laughs> <laughs> Dash canceling through Castle Town. Amazing. Um, oh, going for Louis' glitch? Yeah, I was one frame late, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... If you're at full speed, it's a one frame trick. It's it's just a position-based thing but, um, where you can activate this cutscene in a weird place and it saves a second and... Well, 1.7 second over just watching it normally. Um... Yeah, so this section is Minda's Desperate Hour. Uh, Minda's dead, so we're bringing her back to the Minda store. We've got to replace her with a new one. And uh, to do that, he's just got to go through Castle Town and the sewers again. And uh, just a little bit of movement. Nothing major going on here. Yeah, they'll hopefully give us our new Minda at a discounted price. Yes. Uh, maybe we got a warranty on this one. Hopefully. All right. Really bad to fall down here, so don't want to don't wanna do that. Yeah, technically you can skip this first rope. It's even possible RTA, but it is RNG dependent and it's pretty precise. Yes, I have seen it. I didn't realize it was RNG. I've, I've done it, but yeah, sometimes they notice you even though you like grab onto the rope and they're like, hey, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm above. Why do you see me? Yeah, so I haven't done the testing on that. Jeez is the one who's done it, so I'm not an expert, but I believe what he said is that there's a, essentially a 50% chance that the Goron is looking one way and if he's looking one way, then he catches you. If he's looking the other way, um... he doesn't. Also, you may have noticed at the beginning of this Minda's Desperate Hour, we were human. I don't know exactly why. I believe it's because we have Master Sword. It's very weird. The game just gets confused. But you're supposed to have been Wolf. What that shows off is that you can still transform. Even in Minda's Desperate Hour, you can do that because we have Master Sword. And we're yeah. going to be transforming here coming up. Yeah, and that'll save a, a little chunk of time. That I only even think about if I'm doing a glitchless run or something where I can't do it. Or HD. 
So right it here. Seems so natural. We could just transform and use lantern to burn this web. We don't need Ooh, the. Going for the quick climb. Yep, quick climb. Nice. That is probably the last quick climb we'll see unless something goes wrong. Oh yeah, what was your like bedtime? It was 1.24.07. I lost a minute nice. to Morpheal RNG. Yeah, that was that was a rough Morpheal. Yeah, 124 is a very good time for a marathon. Or uh, in general, it's a very good time. I keep saying that. It's condescending. No, it's it's still pretty good, and I can still PB this run. Yeah, for sure. Best possible time is 249.09. So world record's possible is what I'm hearing. Yes, it yep. is. There's a little optimization. You could jump attack those bulbins off the ropes. It saves a very small amount of time. The second one, I believe, is RNG, so I don't go for the second one. The second one, it's not RNG, it's just position. Uh, if you use the camera automatically turning as a cue, then you can get it reliably. Okay. Well, I've had issues with it, so I kind of... Yeah, I same. go in I... phases of, like, purging strats. Oh! Lost my dash. Okay. Oh. That's awkward. I did not realize I lost my dash. Yeah, he must have brushed up against something. No biggie. That, I think that actually makes the bridge a little easier. Um, oh yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm essentially the same way with the first bull one. Like, I, I've done that jump attack before, but I usually don't because um, it, it just makes the camera really weird right afterwards. Just little time savers anyway. Yeah, barely. It's only like a half of a second. The second one saves about 0.7 from my timing. First one, 0.5. Mm -hmm. Not much. Not about right. Yeah, so Al is being very smart and not forgetting to get ending blow here. Again, it is possible to get all the way to the end of the game. Is it really faster to claw shot from right there? I believe so. It was, I, somebody in my chat timed it. And they're like, okay. oh, I used your video up against another video. But it doesn't matter whether you get one hand or two hand grab, which right. I did get a two hand grab there, which is really nice. So we can talk about one hand versus two hand grabs, actually. Sure. Um, so when you claw shot and you go to climbing, this, it's RNG whether Link grabs on with one hand or two. And so if he climbs with, uh, if he grabs, if he latches on and grabs with two hands, then he can instantly climb. While if you latch on with one hand, then he has to latch on with his other hand, which takes about a second or so. Uh, before climbing. So it's RNG and it saves time to get a two hand grab. We always want to get two hand grabs. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely faster to claw shot from like farther away for that one, but at the same time, if you spend any time aiming, then it's not worth it. Uh, so something interesting is going to happen here that we don't really think about when we're doing runs. Um, he entered this golden wolf or this like a uh, hero shade sequence from clock nope from castle town i'm just gonna name it every town now and now he's in Farron woods it worked him there and the reason for that is that the wolf that is supposed to give you ending blow in a casual playthrough is the first one and that's right there in Farron woods and this is a, a glitch called golden wolf wrong warping and it's pretty strange. I don't fully understand it because it's not really used in runs. This one, this wrong warp has been used in runs for a long time, but it's not actually useful. Like he just warped away from Farron, he didn't do anything there. And in theory, it's possible to get other ones, but there's no like actual use for it. It doesn't get you, you know, even though there is a wolf in the desert and there is a wolf right outside Hy Hyrule Castle, we can't use it to get to the desert early or to Hyrule Castle early. So I don't know much about it, but um, someone does. I certainly do not. <laughs> uh, shout out to the person who once told me in a YouTube comment that you can just hook shot up this ladder. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. Very helpful. Yep. 
spoilers, you can't. Also, the hookshot isn't in this game. Yeah, what hookshot? <laughs> By the way, this is the tower that you jump off of in Jotwad. Jump off of the watchtower and die category. Uh, no, it's Wait, the watchtower it? and... No, oh, it's the watchtower and CAC. Uh, yes, select no. Yeah, alright. Select yes. Oh, do you select. say no? Oh, no. Oops. No, I'm not gonna go beat Arbor's ground. I'm good. So it's not this one. It's the one in Capricorico. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, okay. Okay. Just my bad. As far as I know, so I think Chris is awesome. Has done some runs of like, uh, get the iron boots and EBF and jump off Aru's tower and live or something like that. Some ridiculously long acronym. Um, but it, yeah, that's not a main, or well, it's not a normalized category. Then another thing, I don't know if we've mentioned it, is the transforming uh, from wolf to human. I don't know if I've, we mentioned the going into see no. up. So mm -hmm. every time I transform from wolf to human, it's faster to see up first before calling Midna because when you see up in first person, it skips this camera pan where we kind of look at Midna on Link's back. And that only happens if, first of all, Midna is on Link's back. Like right now you can see Midna is on Link's back. If Midna is not on Link's back, then that camera pan doesn't happen. So it, in those scenarios, it's faster to see up and then call midnight. I believe it saves like two frames. It's not much. It's it's more than that. Uh, if let me remember my numbers. Uh, I'm not gonna say numbers because I don't remember them exactly. Uh, basically, it saves a couple of frames regardless, and then if you're also waiting on something to happen in game, then it saves more time because the time you spend going into first person. Uh, allows other things to continue happening in the game, whereas if you call Midna with Z, then while the camera is panning around, everything else in the game stops. Oh yeah, that is true. So there are times where it doesn't matter how long I take to call Midna after C up, because I'm waiting for something to happen anyway. So in those cases, I kind of just take my time to make sure I don't mess it up. Yeah. And also, Midna's going to be on his back for the entire rest of the run. Uh, she's only not on his back, or not on Wolfling's back. In if you're in the overworld before or outside of a twilight and as wolf before beating like that and beating like that and very conveniently we already have ball and chain here so this allows us to get in past this fence without uh um feeling a war uh, so we're coming up on the second use of map glitch in the run this is the only other one right i think so um so the goal in Bulblin camp is to get to King Bulblin, and it's really easy to just run around and get the key from one of the Bulblins and enter normally, but it is a little bit faster to enter from out of bounds. To do that, Al has to get map glitch so that he doesn't just void out. So he just did that. He tried to warp away, but interrupted it with the Midna call. Um, and it, it is frame perfect, but you just press two buttons on the same frame and Alberto unplugged, I assume, for it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so now he's just going to do a little setup, get out of bounds. For the Bulbin Archer to fire. And he's going to jump down. And normally, down this low, he would void out, but because he has map glitch, he doesn't. And he just keeps moving forward until he hits the trigger for the King Bulbin fight, which extends infinitely upwards and down. And he's going to be careful in this fight not to die. Yeah, dying loses a lot of time. <laughs> dying. <laughs> like yeah, 30 so minutes or something. Yeah, it's like 20, 25. I've so, done it before twice in a run, and I lost an hour. Nice. Twice in the same run. That's <laughs> yeah. Impressive. I was new to the game. I was new to the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, so because of map glitch not allowing load zones, it doesn't allow the load from the continue screen after you die. If you hit yes, the game just, like, stops. Um, yeah, if you die there, then you have to go back to your last save, which is uh, before leaving Snow Peak. You'd have to do all of Lake Bed 2 again, the Morpheal fight, and uh, Minus Desperate Hour and cross the entire desert. Luckily, we didn't have to do that here today. No. Yeah, that would have been pretty catastrophic. Because I uh, I said I was going to get backup saves, and then I didn't do it. But <laughs> we're fine. We don't need backup saves now. We're fine. Past this point, we're, we should be fine. Yeah. And so now comes the second half of the run, 
The first half was pretty much opening up the map, uh, doing some just kind of game progression, story progression requirements, and getting some items. The second half is essentially a dungeon rush. He's going to beat Arbiter's Grounds, and then go to City in the Sky, and then that'll allow him to go to Palace of Twilight, which will then allow him to go to Hyrule Castle. And a solid movement in that first room. Oh, nice Moldorm. <laughs> oh man, that Moldorm is such a jerk. Yeah. That's total RNG. The Moldorm can just get in your way and you claw shot it even if you're aiming well above it. This dungeon has a lot of sand in it, and there's a there's some we when you go in sand normally you go really slow and it kind of just sucks you in and then you void out. But if you initiate a roll right before you reach the sand, then your roll will continue before that happens. And so often there are times where we go from island to island with like the sand in the middle, like right here, we roll across it so that we uh, we keep our roll from island to island. Yeah. And there's actually there's another, another way. Oh, you were about yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say. Well, you go ahead. You have a nice long cut. Well, okay. So uh, there's something called brake sliding in this game. So if you roll and then you hold target and slightly down on the stick, it will make Link's speed convert from positive to negative. And basically what that means is that Link will have a different speed uh, cardinal value, and that value can't lose speed in sand uh, like it does with positive speed. I guess because they never thought you'd have negative speed in sand. And so you can kind of just really, really quickly move across the sand all the way across the room for uh, for a really, really, really long time and keep your speed. So that's going to be used uh, later to go through the sand without losing all of our speed. Yep. And in this dungeon, Alberto does have to do a lot of things. Like, he's got to complete a lot of the dungeon, but he's going to do it in very much not the intended order. Uh, so you notice that the Poe that spawned right in front of him, he just completely ignored. You don't need to kill that one. Uh, normally what you have to do is kill that Poe to get the Poe sent and then go through the other direction, but because Al can just pop up onto that pillar and LJ across this room, he can get across, and what he'll do is go to what's supposed to be the fourth Poe first, and he'll get the scent from that, and that'll allow him to skip the first Poe entirely. I don't even remember how to do this dungeon normally. Um... I I basically do, but yeah, it's it's pretty different. It's there, so there's complex. One room, there's one, or actually no, there are two rooms in this dungeon, in the first half of this dungeon, that we just never touch in any speed run. <laughs> well, aside from the Um That will still be new and interesting next time we do casual playthroughs. Uh, so in this fight, the number of times this post spins around Alberto quickly is going to be RNG. Um, it, it'll start spinning quickly immediately at the beginning of the first phase, and at the beginning of the second phase, it'll start spinning quickly if he does an RNG manip correctly. It's a pretty easy one. There it is. And now it'll start spinning. And he's going to go over towards the door. There's a cool strat for um, knocking down this bow regardless of which spawn it is. Almost did that too late. Got it. Oh, yeah. That that's a hard point. that's a hard spin attack. If they spawn out of bounds, you gotta wait for them to attack you and spin attack. And your spin attack has slightly more range than their attack, and you can hit them before they hit you. And there we kind of traded hits, but it still worked luckily. Yeah. Yeah, that can get pretty gnarly if you miss that. Or worse, if you somehow miss getting the post hole after you've knocked it down, because then you have to do both cycles again. Alright, so I'm gonna be getting the chest here. Yeah. Unfortunately. Skipping this chest would save a few seconds. Honestly though, I wonder how much time this chest even saves over getting a rupee from fire. Not sure. We could time it. Yeah, I probably should time that at some point. Probably should. Cause yeah, that chest is kind of out of the way. You could take a much more direct path if you didn't have to get that chest. Yeah. Well, Actually, okay, now that I think about it, the nice thing about getting that chest is that it clears the red rupee text. It does, for the yeah. Next ones. So it's, yeah, it's probably slower to get fires. I'm sure someone has timed this before. It's like, we're getting two more red rupees here, so skipping both rupee texts would be just awful. Oh, yeah, that would be... <laughs> so... Yeah, no. Um, so yeah, Al has now killed the... His first Poe, which is Poe 4 in the dungeon. And now he's heading to his second Poe, which is Poe 2. He's back on track. 
And I'm picking up this small key for use later. Looks like you got a bubble. Oh, I like oh, that targeting. Oh, I need to remember. That was the wrong equip. I need ball and chain. Oh, yeah. Good catch. I mean, you know, it's not horrible if you're out of bombs in high roll. But well, how many do I have? Do you, do you I catch how notice. many I have? Nah, I'll have to I, do I, some I math. Or here, I can do a. I can look at a Twitch clip. Give me a sec. Okay. Because I need. Uh, I need one for. I need a, at least three for the rest of the run. Or Twitch Seven. can decide that I can't clip. That's fine. We'll find out soon. Oh, going for speed rat? Yeah. Uh, uh, I speed. sort of got it. Sort of. Yeah. Speed went a rat. little early on my side hop. Or my. I went a little early. You have to manip this rat to hit you as you're pushing this thing that spins around. If he hits you, it keeps spinning, and you get control of Link a lot earlier. Yeah, so, so you can get to seconds. the door before the thing fully opens. What's cool about that is that if you do that in a casual playthrough, then you're soft locked. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, because the the room above isn't open, so if you if you just enter it, then there's a big wall in your way. You can't go anywhere. I'm gonna do this in reverse. Yeah, so the small key he got earlier, he's going to use now. There's no key obvious on the store, but you can hear one falling to the ground or a lock falling to the ground because uh, there was a key or a, a lock on the other side. He's doing this in reverse because of roll and skip. Skips a few rooms. And this room can get a little hairy. Hopefully the RNG will be nice. Oh, you're just going for this. Okay. Yeah, but it was actually really fast. That was a really good, really good pattern. Yeah. I am very close to dying. Yeah, health is a little worrisome <laughs> here. Uh, are there any Stalkin left to nab you out of the cutscene? I don't think oh. so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't see any. Luckily. Because they deal yeah. half a heart, so... we Cutting that a little close. Luckily, you respawn in the same room if you die, but it is a very slow uh, death cutscene. Yeah, you just like gotta be careful seconds. on the stall post with the ball and chain. I will be equipping ball and chain. That equip budge, I should have equipped ball and chain. I just kind of like, that's kind of habit to equip two bombs here. I need, uh, it's optimal to equip bombs here to use on the Stalfos coming up. Is it Stalfos? Is that their name? Uh, yeah. But uh, we can use ball and chain instead to skip two bombs. It's just a little slower. So I'll be doing that instead. So I'll have to do another equip. So just remember to not oh, yeah. use do bombs you, here. Do you buffer the break slide? I do not oh, buffer okay. the break slide. I was going to suggest that as an equip spot, but never mind. Oh yeah, so here's a big sequence break. Um, instead of going around the whole dungeon, Al's just going to like flip past this little statue thing, or column thing, and get the boss key right now. Super easy. Reverse! Do -do -do -do. Reverse! Do -do -do -do. Um, so this is a weird example of getting the boss key before getting the dungeon item even. He doesn't have the spinner yet. Um, but now he's got to go over and get the spinner. He's going to do some cool movement to get over to it. Um, doing this room in reverse without spinner. Nice. There's got an awkward jump to do here. To get over to the door. And this is the brake sliding we talked about earlier. You see Link just kind of shuffling forwards through the sand and not losing very much speed. He is still losing height, so there is an element of uh, time to it. Oh, well, that was interesting. I thought you were going to bonk for sure. Uh, okay. Uh... Oh, I didn't trigger him. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so usually what people do for that is run over to this one and then just kind of swing until both the others come. Yeah, I kind of, like, forgot to do that. I It's not often that I do that backup. Yeah, it's it's pretty uncommon to need it. Nice health, though. It's I mean, you didn't really need it, but, you know, nice to not be on half a heart. And it fell on you. Oh, yeah, this movement. Yeah, another example. That actually saves a very small amount of time to do that. That movement over claw shotting, 
but it looks cool. And if it looks cool, that means I have to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, you get extra style points. Yeah. Style um, points, I think, matter more. So Here's a death sword. And fortunately, Al is feeling like a pacifist in this dungeon. So he's he didn't kill Poe 1 earlier. He just kind of ignored it. He's also not going to kill Death Sword. Death Sword looks real scary and has a big old sword, but has a, has a kind heart. So instead, Al's going to skip Death Sword and just go to the spinner chest without killing him. And to do that, he's got to jump over a big old gate. Uh, so he's going to lure Death Sword into the corner and then position him in such a way that when he rises up, he can get a super jump off of Death Sword and just go right over. Unfortunately, he got bad RNG. And that's so random. But... Uh, a little early. Yeah, th this is a pretty precise trick. There we go. All right, second try. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, it, it's one of those tricks where it looks really easy when you see it done, but when you see you know when you see someone learning it and they're just failing it over and over, you see how hard it is. Yeah, it's it's very 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 precise. Yeah. The position matters. The angle matter. It's a lot of things matter. It's just it's a lot. Very very involved trick, and only works by a few pixels. I will be turning a metronome on here, so. Do not be alarmed. Yeah, uh, are, are you gonna deafen for Stallard Skip, or should I just stop talking? Uh, I, I don't want to distract you. Just let me know what to do. I don't have my computer on OBS right now. Oh, you I could deafen. Off. I could deafen, actually. I could Up do that. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and deafen when it comes to it. Okay. So I'll, I'll just talk through it. Yeah. My okay. wolves still need to be able to hear the metronome, but... <laughs> yeah. So just when it comes to the bomb boost, I'd uh, appreciate the quiet for that part. Oh, oh, so you will be able to hear. Okay. I'll be able to hear the metronome, but, um, and you. You'll be able to hear me. Okay, so I'll, I'll be quiet at relevant parts. At the... Yes, at the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, what we're alluding to here... <laughs> is uh, one of the most recently added tricks for RTA speedruns is one called Stallard Skip, which uh, is named so because we skip Stallard with it, the whole boss. Um, in general, just like boss key skips, uh, boss skips aren't really possible in TP because if you kill a boss, a portal spawns that will take you out of the dungeon. But Stallard is an exception in that to finish the dungeon, you just kind of have to go past a gate. And the gate is always there, the load zone is always there, so if you can get past it by some other means than killing Stallard and opening it, then you're set. And this trick was considered task only for quite a while because um, it's very hard. Uh, and you, you'll see when Al does it. It, it looks hard, too. Um, there, are, there are three main parts of this trick. Uh, what Al's going to have to do is a trick called Claw Shot Actor Displacement to... Uh, move one of the stall troops in the arena towards the gate so that he can use it to clip through. And that will require falling off of a ledge while he claw shots the stall troop, which is very, very precise in both position and timing. Um, he'll then have to do an L-slide claw shot to um, clip into a wall, and then he'll use the claw shot on the stall troop to do a bomb boost out of bounds into the load zone. Yeah, uh, this has only become RTA viable recently because some people decided that uh, any percent wasn't optimized enough and they made a setup. At an angle, turns. Oh, you do roll method, okay. Very precise claw shot on this guy. Unfortunately, shot, claw shot a little early. It, it, you can see all these tiny adjustments that he's making. This, this is a very difficult trick. So unfortunately, you know, failing at pretty much any part of the trick means avoiding out and trying again. And this this trick does save nearly two minutes. It's like a minute forty or so. It, it can actually be more than that um, with really good RNG too. Um, it is pretty good.
There we go. Got a cab. Very nice. Okay, so stall troops in the corner. Now he's going to get a very specific position and flash shot it to clip into the wall. And he's going to have to be dealing with Staller this entire time. So, right around him. Fortunately, the boomerang can calm Staller down for a little bit. There we go. And now he's got a bomb boost of time. I'm not going to talk during this. All right, very nice. That okay. trick is I as am... hard as it looks. Undeafened. All right, I'm back. Hi. Welcome back. I, I was just saying that trick is is exactly as hard as it looks, or harder. Um, the sec second try is very nice. Oh yeah, no. that is definitely the hardest trick in the run, like without a doubt. Like I, I think a lot of people can agree on that. Yeah, and a complicated one too. Yeah, very complex, lots of variables, very precise. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, a couple of years ago, actually, I don't know my timeline. Something like a couple of years ago, the world record was dropped to uh, mid-252. And uh, since then, with this trick that... Oh, nice groin. Um, since we've added this trick that saves uh, mid-40 or so, and Norgor, which saves an additional 50 now, um, we've only lowered the world record to uh, a high 250. It's just that difficult to get everything in one run. Yeah. We added two tricks that are probably harder than all the other tricks. Like, like we had two tricks, and those are also, like, the two of the hardest tricks in the run, you know, conveniently. Yep. And they're also very far into the run as well. Like, the other ones, you could kind of just reset if you, you know, fail them really early. But, like, that's two hours into the run. It's very far into the run. Yeah, and if you're going for world record, you you need those tricks. Well, yeah. maybe, possibly not Norgor, definitely Stalard Skip. Oh, so we're coming up on the biggest sequence break in the entire run, and it looks like nothing. Um, I'll let Elle do it. Gaze in reference at this clip. Clips past the Owl statue by transforming, and with that, he has skipped all of Temple of Time, Ilya's memory quest, oh no, um, and the Ancient Skybook side quest. Yeah. So, <laughs> that clip saved like an hour or something. Yep, it is quite literally a biggest sequence break, and it, yeah, it's just, it's it's kind of interesting how, I don't know, I, maybe it's too easy to skip that much? I don't know. It It is pretty silly. Like, when you learn that trick, you don't think of it as anything, because it's not, like, it's not even hard, really. You just transform in the right place. Yeah, you don't think of it as, whoa, all right, guys, time for the biggest trick in the whole run. Like, I feel like we just did the biggest trick in the whole run, just to save, like, Almost minute two minutes. Four. Yeah. <laughs> this one is like, all right, well, there's a trick that doesn't really matter. I don't know. Saves an hour. Yeah. Mm. It certainly is anticlimactic to skip all of that in the game. Yeah, but if you like the dungeons, run all dungeons. All dungeons is yeah. a great category, and it's only like 45 minutes longer or so. And you still do that trick. Still do Stallard Skip. Oh, yeah, you still do that trick, even though you yeah. don't need to skip Temple of Time. Skips the quest to yep. uh, the whole owl quest, owl statue quest. Very tedious quest. Yeah, Pretty and tedious. Ilya's memory quest. I don't know. I like the owl statue thing. Yeah, I, I just got lost in my casual playthrough. Very badly lost in that quest. Mm. I was like, you want me to do what now? Interesting. I had not seen a two side hop for that before. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing you can do. Lines up the angle kind of nicely. Yeah, the question in chat about Ball and Chain. Ball and Chain is only strictly required for Zant's uh, Blizzetta phase. It's yes, that would save a lot Blizzetta, of time. We don't like 
If you could if you could skip ball and chain, that would also save a lot of time because it's only used yep. once in the run. All the other times are just convenience. Like the, for example, ball and chain deals a really large amount of damage really really fast. So we often use ball and chain just to defeat enemies quickly because you just spin it around, and it goes fling fling fling, and every time you're flinging them, it just deals a very large amount of damage very quickly. Yeah. Uh I I often see people talk about things like that, like, oh no, if only we could skip the ball and chain, we'd save so much time. But like, as someone who runs this game, I, I don't mind spending the time to do it, like, if that's the most optimal thing. It, it adds some really fun gameplay, like Snow Peaked uh, Ruins, even though it only lasts for like three minutes of the run, is one of my favorite sections of the run. Um, I'm kind of glad we have it. But yeah, yeah, Snow Peak a is a really cool dungeon in the run, for sure. And it's very short. Yeah. So I'd, it doesn't feel that tedious, it really doesn't. Um, and this is also one of my favorite sections of the run, City in the Sky. Lots of cool stuff to do here. I'm going for the double. The double. You know it. Nice. A, a really big skip here. Room. This is a really, really big skip in City just then. Yeah, so I'll just transform before that door and then transforms again right after it because Wolf can open the door from far away enough that he never hits the trigger to turn on the ceiling fan in this room. Which lets you get the boss key. Like, he could go get the boss key right now if he wanted to. Um, it's a little faster to get a little later. Nice bonk. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, that, that's a big points. sequence break. It skips half the dungeon. Ish. Oh. Uh, a little early there. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm attempting to get off of the spinner just before the, the bridge uh, reaches all the way. And that allows me to get off a roll. Yeah. There we go, like that. Do you go for two rolls? No, just one. Oh, okay. Can you do two? Really? You, you can. Uh, I, well, yeah, I was only wondering. Like, no one goes for that, but I was wondering because you got off so early if you were trying to do two. I always suspected you could do two. I didn't know you could. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can get off really, really, really early. So, now nah, I just yeah. mistimed it. I, I don't know the frame window for it. You can do an LJA to this chest here. I There seems to be a miscommunication in the community, a discrepancy in how much time it saves. Well, I mean... It's one of those things where it's tight enough that everyone can just time it for themselves, and if you find it worth it, you go for it. If you don't, you don't. Because, um, yes, yeah, Zach timed it to be a little bit, fa like a few frames faster than what you just did, but I timed them to be exactly equal to the frame. And yeah. It's There's a, a few places in the game, in Cydia especially, where there are discrepancies in how much time things save. Yeah. Like that strat right there that I just did. There's another way you can do that skip, which, by the way, would you like to go over that skip that I just did, Beast? Yeah, that was interesting. I, I've never seen you do it that way. Yep, it's another way That's you can cool. do it. Um, well, yeah, I've seen it done that way, but not intentionally. <laughs> That's just like oh. if you accidentally go too far. Yeah, so um, there's a cutscene at the end of that bridge where Argrok comes in and goes, Rawr! and breaks the whole bridge. And it's convenient to skip that cutscene just by you know doing a little bit of parkour and not being on the ground where the cutscene trigger is. Because one, you don't have to watch the cutscene, so that's a time save in itself. And two, when he save warps after getting the dungeon item and double claw shots, uh, he's going to respawn back at that small key chest because the game thinks that he needs to be there because he hasn't seen the cutscene yet, um, rather than back at the beginning of the dungeon, which will be a little bit faster, uh, especially because if he respawns back at the beginning of the dungeon, then he needs to do that um, fan trigger skip again where he transforms into wolf at the door. I'm pretty sure that the change in spawn location doesn't really make that big of a difference because I've it, had runs where I failed it and didn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, it's not much of a difference. The main thing is just the cutscene, but I, eh, I don't remember the exact times, but I'm pretty sure I timed the um, small key spawn to be fair. It's close though. It's it's close. It's definitely close it, in yeah. timing. Yeah, you're right. Alright, I'm, when I'm doing this LJA, I'm bouncing the boomerang off of the door to make it come back faster, so I can do it quicker. Yeah, he's doing all these rooms really, really quickly, quickly with the help of LJAs. Are you doing the enemy LJA in this room? Yup. Yup. Very nice. That's Depends on the keys. Uh-huh. Yeah, showcasing that LJAs aren't boomerang dependent. You can really be targeting anything. 
Just depends on what surface surface it's on. Haha, they fell off. Silly Dynalphos. Scared <laughs> of the claw shot. Yeah, the claw shot, if you fire it in the correct way, it, you, they just kind of like try to avoid it. And in trying to avoid it, oopsies, they fall off and die. Fun it looks fact, really you, funny. You can also do it with the boomerang and kind of with the spinner, but you void out too if you do it with the spinner. Oh, nice. I didn't know you could do it with that. Yeah, LJA stands for long jump attacks in his SMM chat. Um, and it just means that you get some extra speed on a jump attack by targeting an enemy in a specific way. And it'll help us skip things. Uh, you'll also notice that when Al needs to use an item in a room, he'll often pull the item at the door, like during the door opening cutscene of the previous room, or from the previous room, rather. Uh, that wasn't possible in other dungeons because Link uses his hands in the animation to open the doors so that, you know, he has to put the item away if he has something in hand. But in this dungeon and in Palace of Twilight, for whatever reason, he doesn't. Um, so Al can pull items at the door and it saves a little bit of time over pulling the item after the room. I unfortunately can't go for the cool jump here. I don't have enough health. Uh, I, I would die because it, it does yeah. two hearts of damage. But Uku just walked right in front of me conveniently. So thanks, Uku. <laughs> Yeah, that, that jump doesn't save very much if Uku's right in front of me anyway. Yeah, it's a very small jump save. Not a big one. And so Al has already made his way to the dungeon item. Got a cool trick coming up here to skip this mini-boss fight. Yeah, we're pretty uh, pretty peaceful with mini-bosses in this run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the Air Alphos. And it's a pretty long fight. It's got two phases with a big long cutscene in the middle like most mini-bosses do. So Al's just going to do a position setup with the iron boots rolling, and then uh, from this position he can just claw shot right past the fight. That was fast. Yeah, that, that was a really fast one. It's pixel perfect. So aiming to a single pixel is kind of tricky. Uh, you want to do very slight movements on the analog stick to get these really tiny changes in your angle, and it's really easy to overshoot by accident or just not move your angle at all because you want to hit very slight on the stick. Yeah, it's also really easy for newcomers to, to uh, like do too much of that and aim really slowly from the beginning so they don't make it in time. Uh, and here, yeah, you see that Al spawned at the small key chest instead of at the beginning of the dungeon. I would have been stuck in there. Fun fact, no save and quit can also skip that mini-boss fight, but then you're <laughs> kind of stuck. So you have to die to the mini-boss. You have to have him hit you through the wall. We don't see yep. that in this run because we just save and quit. Yeah, w one other... I mean, I, I hesitate to call it a popular category. One other main category on the leaderboard for this game is any percent no save and quit, which is kind of interesting in that um, because you can't save and quit, you can't do back in time at the beginning, so that changes things. And then you also can't just save warp after getting the dungeon item for every dungeon. Um, so it, it's a bit different. It's not as widely run now. Apparently it used to be a lot more popular uh, like most of a decade ago before either of us was around. Nice two hand grabs. That was very fast. That was three two hand grabs in a row. That's a six hand grab. Whoa. Uh, okay. Smart. Good. I almost was fooled there. Yeah. You want the boomerang to be over land that's higher than Link's feet for that one. And so you want to get it over that alcove. It kind of just bounced off there. And I knew, I recognized it was going to do it. So I did not go for that. Otherwise I'd jump down and knock in an LJA. I wouldn't get a full speed one. You still get yeah. some speed every time. Uh, yeah, but not all, so. Not, not always. I guess as you make the way your way to the North Wing, I can talk about LJA speeds. Um, I've been saying that LJA is to get an, a full speed LJA. You want to be you want to be targeting something that's on ground over or like well higher than Link's feet, or over a void, and that gets your so your normal targeted jump attack speed when you're targeting something that's on the same level ground as Link is 36 approximately, uh, just rounding to integers here, and it goes up to 72, which is about double. Or it is double 36 exactly, but um, if you're over targeting something over a void or something well higher than Link's feet, but if it's just a little bit higher than Link's feet, it actually scales up from 36 to 72 depending on the um, the delta. And then if the boomerang or whatever you're targeting is over something lower than Link's feet, then your speed gets lower and lower. I don't actually know whether there's a minimum for it because it can go really low. 
Yeah, so it's always important to get a full speed LJA. You can get low speed ones and things fail because of that. Yep. Yeah, I almost went too fast there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Be careful now. Yeah, Fan Tower, unfortunately, in this category, we can't really do anything to speed up. Al's just going to be trying to make the most optimal cycle here. Uh, in categories that get the bow, all dungeons and 100%, there's a really cool strat you can do here where you snipe the target that Al just shot, that crystal, uh, from the ground, and then you ascend and it saves half a cycle of the fans. Oh, that's pretty cool. And technically, you can... You can use two bomb arrows and snipe both of the crystals, and you can save a full cycle, but it's absurd. It's like, possible, but just barely. Gonna get a frame perfect roll here. Nope. Oh, just mass for it, hope to get it. Yeah. That one you could time. I don't know whether anyone does, though. Quick claw shot to skip climbing on these vines. That was a really good one. Yeah, that was good. It's really hard to tell whether you got a good one in advance. Yeah. Actually, you might be interested. I found a new setup for it, so oh, I yeah? started off. Yeah. Uh, most runners, what they do is they aim all the way up, like as high as you can, and then they uh, they aim like to the right until the the yellow target comes up. What I do is I aim all the way up and then aim down until the yellow target shows up. To guarantee I aim as high as possible. Or else you have to climb a little bit uh -huh. after claw shotting. Okay, I see, yeah. So the thing, the horizontal panning idea is to avoid getting pixeled. Um, like, do you know about the dead pixel there? Yeah, yeah, so dead pixel, yeah. we actually haven't seen it this run, luckily, but we don't want to see it. <laughs> Yeah. Dead pixel is uh, not great. So dead pixel is basically when you aim all the way to uh, well, the very last pixel on the left or right of a vine. So normally you want to claw shot on these vines and then climb. Well, if you claw shot on the very far left or right, as far as you can, instead of entering that climbing uh, one or two hand grab, Link will just like act as if he's going to claw shot again. And you can't exit that. The only way to exit is either A, claw shot again onto something that's latchable or B, just drop. And there, there's nothing you can claw shot. So you'd, if that happened by accident, you'd have to drop and void out and do the entire room again. Yeah. So you do not want dead pixel, especially there. But there's other places that you can back it up, but not yeah. there. There's no backup. Just void out and try again. So. Uh, Al, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a big scary dragon here. I think you should probably run away. Yeah, well, let's do that because I don't want to fight him. So let's just, let's just jump off the edge of the world. Yeah, that seems like a logical, logical thing to do. All the way with the iron boots. <laughs> You're coming with me, boots. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that saves a little bit of time when we're just waiting for Ardrak to fly around the arena. And then... I forgot I don't need to put on boots there yet. Oops. This fight is kind of an auto-scroller. It takes a little while, but Al is going to speed it up a little bit by doing what we call flame skips. Um, he's going to wait for an audio cue and then uh, descend on the claw shot in the V hat to a certain height so that Argorok stops blowing its flame because it thinks you've fallen down, but then you just claw shot back up and you get around it. I guess uh, flame cancel is probably a better way to put that. And he's got two cycles of doing it exactly that way, and then a third cycle that is um, a little bit different just because Argorok's pattern is a little bit different, but essentially the same idea. Claw shotting quickly, fast aiming matters a lot in this run. It adds up to a lot of time loss over the course of the run if you can claw shot, uh, if you claw shot slowly. Yeah. So yeah. all the claw shots matter a lot. And seeing a task of this dungeon in particular is really amazing because, of course, all the aim is perfect. It goes by so quickly. All right, we have counted to two, correct? Yep. All right, this is three. Just want to make sure we count correctly. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Alright, three. So the specific way I'm doing this is to get a uh, faster cycle. Yeah, so, so here Argorok, we wait. Turn, Argorok turns on this cycle. Um, and there's nothing we can do about that. But we can 
just kind of sink low enough while it turns that it cancels the flame. And very quick fight. Yeah. Well, if quick you mean by that was like a three minute fight, then yeah, sure. <laughs> quick compared <laughs> to what it could have been. <laughs> yeah, the the fights in this game in general are pretty cinematic, I would say. Uh, yeah. They're not, they're like, oh, big monster. Oh, cutscene showing off big monster. Cutscene showing off transformation phase of big monster. Yeah. Cutscene showing off destroying the monster, him falling and dying and shattering into a million pieces. Very cinematic, I would say. So. Yeah, the mid-fight cutscenes in this game for mini-bosses and bosses both are pretty, like you say, cinematic, and, and I, I think they are really nice for casual play, but for, uh, for speedruns, of course, we don't want to see them. True, yeah. Um, which is really the only reason that Death Sword Skip is worth it. The cutscene of... Well, it's, I guess that's the death cutscene for Death Sword, but that ending cutscene of Death Sword's, like, disintegrating into bats is uh, really long. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, there's actually a glitch that happens on a scratch disc on that. Do you want to talk about the scratch disc falling oh, for off Argorak? Argorak? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think the leading theory is that it's not the disc, but the console. But yeah, one, one Twilight Princess runner, the Ethernet Boys, shout out to the Ethernet Boys, uh, has some kind of strange setup where sometimes Argorok will just disappear. <laughs> right, right as he's latching onto it. And no one knows why no one else can replicate that. It's not It's only like him. A, yeah, it's not a glitch in the game. It's like a cartridge tilt kind of thing. He's not doing it on purpose. Like he's not cheating with it or anything. But, um, it's a really interesting thing. And uh, so he can actually manipulate it so that Argrak disappears and he falls off and dies. And then after the death warp, it skips the final cutscene. It, it's really interesting. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Uh, there, when I le when I went into the cannon, when you get blasted off, you're supposed to land in Lake Hylia, but you can't warp away while you're swimming. So what we can do is we can make it so that we don't overshoot the bridge by equipping boots but before getting in so that we fall faster, uh, because we're moving forwards as we fall. And then we want to jump slash as early as possible so we can land on the bridge, just barely. It, it barely works. Yep, and now Al's going to Palace of Twilight, which is open because he totally got all of the mirror shards, all four of them. <laughs> yep, got all of them. <laughs> Well, luckily, the only one that matters is City in the Sky. Yeah, that's why we could skip Snow Peak and Temple of Time. So, yeah, I find it funny, like, when we were in Arbiters, we see the cutscene of the door opening with only three of the things lit. I imagine, like, a funny image of, like, a mirror where, like, it's only in a few pieces and you use it to enter Palace, but <laughs> in my mind, yeah. I can imagine that. Yeah, if the cutscene reflected that, that would be pretty funny. That would be really funny. Like, oh, nice mirror. It's in, like, <laughs> we only have two pieces of it. <laughs> or three, I don't know. We don't get all the pieces. We we skipped two of them, right? So let me get... Yeah. Or, we got, only get you one? got the Arbiter's one and the um, City in the Sky one. So you only get two pieces. Okay, so... <laughs> Actually, wait, no. I think technically you didn't get the Arbiter's one because you didn't raise the mirror. Oh. After doing the Shadow So I only got one. Yep, so two of our four Dungeon Rush dungeons are down now. It's got two left, Palace of Twilight and Hyrule Castle. Palace of Twilight is, uh, yeah, the least broken dungeon that we have uh, in that we need to go through every single room and get every small key. There's just no way around it. Um, but again, I think a speedrun is not made by how much we can skip, but how we can do the things we have to do. And Al's going to be doing all these rooms in very optimal ways to get through them as quickly as possible. Um, you know, killing that Zant head in such a way that he can get to this chest so that he can open it right after the cutscene, and in the first room he got a double hit with one midna charge attack on the Zant head. Um, going to be doing a strat to kill Phantom Zant without Phantom Zant ever warping around wildly. So that will be really cool. Going to skip claw shotting here by uh, doing some side hops and a jump attack. You can't claw shot from right where you're standing anyway. Oh, and I'll be quiet for this so you can hear. Yeah, this uh, requires surround sound to do this fight. It's it's well a lot of hearing. Yeah, it doesn't require necessarily, but like to do it as quickly as possible, yeah. Yeah, you want to hear where he spawns, because he can spawn anywhere in this room, and it's kind of quiet. And if you're too far away, he actually doesn't make a sound at all. Yeah. And, okay. 
Val's um, doing specific combos on Phantom Xant. Okay. He's just going to do a stab and then two spin attacks, and then on the last one, a stab and then three spin attacks. And that will make it so Xant never enters the phase where he's just kind of um, warping around and doesn't let you hit him. And he did that quickly enough that Xant didn't get to spawn any enemies either, so that's really nice. There's an, another L oh, no, slide. Oh no, are you going to get the text? No. Okay. Nope, no text. Luckily, I was very close. I almost yeah. was too slow. So we see a few L slides here to move while claw shotting. We saw them, we saw one for, well, we saw it for Stallard Skip, but it's useful here yeah. too. Just for small optimization. Yeah, we didn't really talk about L slides, just kind of did them during Stallard Skip. But if you are in first person, and shooting the claw shot. Technically, you can do one with the boomerang too, but I don't really understand that. Um, if you're shooting claw shot and you hold a direction and you're in first person, and then you tap L, then Link starts sliding in that direction as you enter third person. And it, yeah, like Al said, it's just a little, just a little optimization because the claw shot moves very quickly. Oh no. Yeah, unfortunately, the fastest way to do this room is just a free throw. So we want to move on to this uh, this uh, platform as it rises. So that way we don't have to go all the way around and then climb up. So we have enough time to get onto it before it rises. And we know where we need to be while casual. I don't think they'd know where to optimally be. Yeah, exactly. In casual play, the Xant hands floating through the walls are much more scary than they are in a speed run. Yeah. Like, we know exactly what to do. They're, they're really never an issue. Yeah, there's no surprises. Well, a casual playthrough, it's a full surprise. It's like a jump scare kind of thing. Oh, there's enemies just to spawn right in front of you. Ah, run away! Like, But there, we, we kind of like know where everyone's going to spawn. We know when to dodge. Yeah. This is a very scary dungeon as a casual, I will say. My heart was pounding in this dungeon from the, from the hands. A oh, fun is fact. Uh, you know, if you run close to these uh, Twilight, then you get the little cutscene of them transforming back into their normal selves. Uh, if you throw the soul and hit one right as that cutscene is happening, then you soft lock. I did not know that. Well, it, it's not a concern in any percent. Like that never happens, <laughs> but it's just a just a fun fact. That's that's fun. Yeah. Al is now entering a room we call Stupid Room. This room is very stupid. Super Mario Sunshine! Yahoo! What? It's a Mario room. Oh. Oh, that was your Mario platforms. voice. Okay. That was I Mario, did. yeah. The, the, your, your voice cut out for a second while you're doing that. Oh. Um, so I was going to just hesitate on this platform for a second because if he got one of the far Zant head spawns, which he didn't, but if he, if he had, then nice. That was one of the hardest spawns you can get, so. Yeah, but the fastest. It's also fast, yeah. So a near spawn is faster because then you can move as you're waiting for the chest to spawn across the room. And yeah, lots of platforming. So that's why that's, we also like to call it the Mario room. That's why I did my Mario impression. I'm sorry, I, I guess I cut out during that. Um, that's also why, because uh, lots of platforming in that room while killing enemies. Oh, you know what? You probably just cut out for me on Discord. It probably wasn't um, cut out on the screen. Discord just likes to do that. Oh. Yeah, very quick fights in this room. Of course, Barely have enough time to claw shot here. Yep. Yeah, he managed his dashes well. He'd be able to get out in time. And here it's faster to claw shot, but... Well, as a pass, but for a human, uh, you have to do it basically instantly. Uh, let me, well, hold on, hold on. That oh. should work. There we go. A little too far to the right on that first one. Yeah, good catch not going for that. Yeah, I would have, that's an example of the boomerang would not have gone out of bounds. And if the boomerang doesn't go out of bounds, then you can't LJA. You get basically a regular jump attack speed, so. But yeah, that, well. I'm sure in that scenario it wasn't faster, but uh, usually it's faster to LJA instead of claw shotting, which is weird because they're intended to claw shot. 
Yeah, well, you're not supposed to... You're not intended to claw shot directly from that platform. Oh, yeah. You're intended to claw shot back to the ceiling. Uh, also, to fight. note, did you mention the different directions for spinning? No. Now go ahead. So, there's, you can spin attack in two different directions in this game, and, and if you spin the stick clockwise versus counterclockwise, Link will, uh, in turn, spin clockwise or counterclockwise. It, it doesn't seem like such a novel concept until you consider that, like, Wind Waker, for example, that isn't the case. Um, right. You always get the same direction. That's important because those are two different spins. They have different properties. Yeah. So, for example, when I fought King Bulblin, those triple hits I was getting, which you'll see another King Bulblin fight later. There's one more in the run. Boilers. Those triple. Oh, oops. Those triple hits only happen if you're spinning counterclockwise. So, but counterclockwise spins, they last for one additional frame. So it's faster on enemies such as Phantom Zant, where you only single hit to do clockwise spins. So I'm actually one of the ambidextrous spinners. I don't know if you are, Beast. Yeah, I am. It's, it, in some cases, better to do one direction, in some cases, better to do the other. And yes. Yeah, just for general purpose quick spins, uh, clockwise is one frame faster on the animation. Um, but for special cases like King Bulblin, uh, counterclockwise matters because you get extra hits. And then I find, like in Cave of Ordeals, for example, when I'm doing Hundo, the direction I quick spin pretty much just depends on the direction I'm already holding the stick. If I'm holding it left, then I continue counterclockwise, and if I'm holding it right, I continue clockwise. But yeah, runners. Uh, things that runners argue about in this game, like silly, silly, petty things that we're not actually arguing about, include uh, clock or yeah, clockwise versus counterclockwise spin attack direction, and which buttons claw shot and boomerang go on. We have X and Y to equip <laughs> items on, and some people have very strong preferences for claw and Y versus claw and X and that so forth. Um, and of course, it doesn't actually matter at all. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I had some I had a little worry issues. <laughs> Hiya. What what did, what did that soul ever do to you? Uh he took my money. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Just just wanted to let you know. Butter sword! Look, I have a big shiny glowy thing. Wow. I'm impressed. Oh! Oh! Yeah, so Al's now done the entire first half of the dungeon, didn't skip a single thing. Um, and now he's going to do the entire second half of the dungeon. There are some very small skips in here, but pretty much it's just playing optimally. Which is hard at its own. Is yeah, yeah, that's not to say that the dungeon is easy. This is a hard dungeon. Clearing the fog with the sword. Alright, I need a lot of health. Yeah. I'm probably gonna get hit again, yeah. Yeah, you know, it is a good thing that you got that heart container, huh? Yep, I would have died. Uh, all right, that's one. I need one more heart. Yeah, so he is doing an LJA here. He'll do one more at the end of the room to just save like a couple of seconds, but really small time saves. All right. what LJAs normally do. There we go. I'm, I'm about to take two hearts of mandatory damage in this next room. Well, I mean, there is a backup for one of them, but. Yeah. Optimally, you take two hearts here. So. Yeah. For oh, sure. I could have gotten that. Uh, whatever. There's another heart container on the edge. A heart. Heart piece. container. Wow. Uh oh. Not heart. Uh, <laughs> just heart. Just heart. You beat the Zant head boss. 
It's really scary. These LJAs are not consistent. Sometimes the boomerang just doesn't go out of bounds, and the it's very complicated why it goes out of bounds, why it does and why it doesn't. Basically, we like to call it human RNG, and just sometimes it doesn't happen, and if it doesn't go out of bounds, again, you don't get the LJA speed. Yeah, basically it's not really RNG, but it's a very precise position-based thing, and you essentially can't tell whether it's going to go out of bounds or not. Um, you can, if you want to, buffer LJAs to see that the boomerang has gone out of bounds before you input it so you don't fall, but it's just a personal preference kind of thing. And I'll... <laughs> I like that Kargarok push. Yeah! Um, I was going to set up for an LJA here to get off this platform a little faster. Gotta be careful on that one so you don't avoid out. And he's going to wait for the Xanthead to explode, or be about to explode, before jumping off so that he doesn't have to ride over again. So the Xanthead doesn't explode before he voids out, and he's got to go kill it a second time. Here he can skip some of the claw shotting up to the boss key, just with this first precise one. And this looks pretty fast. He should be able to make the cycle on the lower Xanthead's. This jump is kind of interesting, because normally you're supposed to transform into Wolf. It forces you to transform, but not if you roll late off the ledge. Yeah. And it's good that you're on a whole heart here instead of half, so that the Baba won't be able to kill you in the next room. Oh yeah, true. Well, also, that Baba just doesn't hit me. He did the other day, actually. I lost it a run to it, actually. <laughs> Yeah, as far as I can tell, it's RNG. Like, yeah. it happens so rarely, but then it knows when you're at half a heart and just decides to go for it. Yep, I've died to him before, yep. And it's just, yep. it just happens, and that's about it. So this whole room is on a cycle, and so all of my movement matters. Yeah, he's going to be trying to get onto a platform at the top of the room as quickly as possible. That's interesting. <laughs> I have seen so many different setups for timing that. Yeah. This that. helps me time when the earliest time I can spin attack those guys. Yeah. So lots of platforming here. Don't hit me. All right, good. You didn't hit me. All right. Nice. So it should be good to make this cycle. There's some, there's another yeah. LJA I can do to this platform here, but again, the boomerang doesn't always go out of bounds, so it's kind of risky to go for it, so I just call a shot instead. Yeah, it's very risky and saves just a tiny amount of time. And if it, do if it doesn't save any time if you buffer it. So it's, yeah, I don't go for it either. And we made it, nice. Very nice. A little, a little close, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you knew it was calculated. Actually, that was another example where surround sound would have been helpful. There, yeah. I mean, he spawned in my sight, but he could spawn on the right or the left out of sight, and knowing which side he spawns on. The fight, gotta make sure my headphones are in the right ear. Yeah. Nice heart drop. Yeah. yeah so we are good. home safe. We're home safe in that room. That was a pretty decent room. Yeah, that was good. And I've just got one more room before the boss door. And this room is full of enemies. I hope he survives. He's just going to spawn camp him. Yeah, I know exactly where they spawn and when. When they drop. And a convenient hard drop. Health doesn't really matter too much here. Uh, I guess going in on one heart would be kind of scary, but... There yeah, is mandatory good. damage in this fight uh, to do it optimally. Yeah. Yeah, and ideally it's just a half heart of mandatory damage, or, yeah, optimal damage, but there's a, a two-frame window for a trick, and if you don't get it, then you take another half heart. It doesn't hurt to fill up, because it loses no time anyway. So this yeah. is the point of the run where health just doesn't matter anymore. So, like, we're yeah. past the point where health matter a lot, and then all of a sudden we just fill up for free, and then health just doesn't matter anymore for the entire I, rest of the run. I have seen someone die to King Bulblin in Hyrule before. Oh, gosh. But, yeah, it was like a a beginner. Yeah, well, I, you can die from any health, pretty much, to King, King Bulblin. So, like, the amount of health you have doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're bad, you're going to die anyway, I think. like. Yeah, if you make mistakes. 
Like yeah. one versus three hearts isn't gonna make a big difference in whether you die to King Goblin, so. All right, probably the most cinematic fight in the game. Yeah, this fight's really cool. We're gonna see some areas that we actually haven't seen before in this run, like this one. This is the uh, Forest Temple boss, Diababa's room. Uh, we Wait, how do you fight. know? We haven't been there. How do you know? I've played this game before. Oh, I'm okay. I'm cheating. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I don't remember next, this room. Yeah, next we go to Dangoro's room from uh, the mini boss from Goron Mines. Which we also did not fight. A uh, good RNG there. Uh, I think it was a frame early there. Yeah, that looked a tiny bit early. Uh, so that was the two frame window trick I mentioned earlier. If uh, he finished that combo at exactly the right time, then he would have one cycled Xant. Uh, damage on Xant is a little bit weird in that it really wants you to go in multiple distinct phases, at least two of them. But on the first two phases, or er, sorry, multiple distinct cycles. On the first two phases, the Diababa and the Dangora one that Al just did, you can one cycle. It's just very tight. On the others, it's not possible. So here, uh, he's got to use... The type of combo I use matters, by the way. Like, the sword slash combo. Yeah, here he's using water bombs to swim again. He, he mentioned earlier that he needs two water bombs for the end of the run. This is why. Still doesn't have the Zora armor. Um, and yeah, the the he's trying to do fast combos not only to go fast, but also so that he doesn't run out of air. Yeah, you barely have enough at that first part. It kind of looked a little scary. My combo, I actually messed up a little bit. Yeah, the the camera can kind of flip when you're targeting. Uh, luckily, able to finish it up nicely. So those are the yep. two. Those are also two mandatory water bombs. You cannot skip. That's another reason why we need water bombs for that as well. Yeah, and that's a, a, a real choke point for beginners because if you mess up that fight and you have fewer than two water bombs, then that's a real problem. You have to go all the way back to City in the Sky to get more. Yep. Which is glad we had run out of bombs. Although I was like thinking like. What if I ran out of water bombs just then? I was like, okay, good we didn't. <laughs> yep. Because that would also basically just completely end the run. Best so. not to think too hard about it, I think. Yes. It's a lot of equips. So, like, oftentimes, like, I get kind of confused by my equips. So. It definitely takes a lot of muscle memory. Uh, the only, this is the only mandatory ball and chain usage in the run. So find a way to do this fight without ball and chain, and we can skip it. Yep. Good luck. Yeah. I, I think what's more realistic is finding a way to skip Palace of Twilight entirely. Oh, that was interesting. Oh. I I've only had that happen once oh, before. Oh, man. I <laughs> that is such a pain. <laughs> I've only had that happen once. I thought I'd be able to hit him again, though. Yeah. Like I thought. Wow. Yeah, that's the that's the mechanic that was removed from HD, the clanking a wall with your sword. Uh, unfortunately, it's a thing, and it actually can mess you up in this fight. That's the second time that's ever happened to me, so... Yeah, that fight's pretty awkward with the camera. You know, being a circular room, the camera's shifting a lot, and uh, there are those walls. And of course, you have ice physics. So just... Uh, you notice here that Al is actually only hitting Xant with the final part of each combo. That's because, again, the way damage works on Xant is kind of strange. Uh, the game really wants you to do it in multiple cycles, and the cycle is ended when you do a strong attack, like the end of a, uh, a four-part combo on Xant. Uh, and it turns out that's all that matters here. It doesn't need to hit him with the normal slashes. Yep, all the others are just for show. <laughs> yep. And does not need this heart container. No, the health really just does not matter from this point on. I could do the rest of the run with one heart and be fine. Yep. Which is funny because, like, I don't know. It is funny that the rest of the run is so much easier. Uh, it just, it's, it's very bizarre. Like, you get to the end of the run and it just feels very easy compared to what we just did. Like, we're past the hardest parts of the run, for sure. Yeah, when I think of the... Well, yeah, when I think of the dungeon rush for this... I really do think of just Arbor's Grounds to Palace. I don't really think of Hyrule as a dungeon, but I think that hasn't really worked in my favor because I, I realized after a while of playing any percent that my Hyrule was just really bad <laughs> compared to yeah. Top Runners. Um, and I think it's just because I didn't really think about it because it wasn't hard to do. Like, you don't have to avoid dying necessarily, but there's still optimizations, of course. 
Speaking of Hyrule, I actually just got the community best for this segment that we're doing right now. Yesterday, by 0 0.06 seconds. 0 0.06. 0 0.06. Okay. Two frames. GG. Oh, yeah, here's the other postman skip. It's uh, basically the same idea. I'm gonna run to a specific point on the bridge and LJ over the postman trigger. It's pretty thin. Um, actually, uh, that equip there, uh, you might have seen it look kind of fast. Like, I equipped those two items fast. If you were looking really closely at my equips, you kind of notice that they all look different. Uh, I don't know if we could, if you want, we could get into, like, the the nitpicky details of equips, but equips are you actually pretty complicated. You have two minutes. Go for it. Two minutes. All right. So, equips. You think, oh, just pull up the item and equip an item. Oh, that's pretty simple. Well, actually, optimal equips is very important in this run. Uh, equipping quickly is actually kind of hard to do and does save a lot of time throughout the run because you do a lot of equips throughout the run. So how do you equip quickly? Well, it's actually pretty complicated. So I want to obviously pull up the item wheel, right? Well, for one, if I were to just hold right or left or whatever direction I want, it would go all the way around the circle before reaching the item. And so you can actually prevent it from doing that by holding target. And then let's say the item is at uh, eight o'clock. And then what I want to do is I want to hold eight o'clock on the stick while uh, while holding target. And that would put it on that item. It would jump to that item without going all the way around the circle. So uh, that's one way you can equip faster. And two, uh, you can double tap, not the first, but the second equip. It's always the last equip you do. It's faster to double tap the item. And what that does is that makes it so you can, uh, you can, uh, you can leave the item wheel faster. So all of these buttons are very quick. It's a lot of button presses really quickly to item wheel, to item wheel equip. So item wheel equips are actually pretty challenging to get used to. And here's another thing. The fastest equips that can happen are the item at the top, because that's the default location of the cursor. The cursor moves at a set speed from across the screen. So if you're equipping the item right next to the top item uh, at like, let's say 11 o'clock or at one o'clock, that's a faster equip than equipping all the way across the wheel at six o'clock. So you have to time it according to how fast the cursor takes to reach the item, or else if you press it early, you don't equip the item. So very complex, very, 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 very complex. Um, yeah, so hope that made sense. I was taking notes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, take notes, definitely. By the way, this uh, this barrier, if you could find a way to skip it, you'd save a tremendous amount of time in this run. It's the final holy grail of all of Zelda speedrunning is this barrier, for sure. So find an early Hyrule Castle and you have solved the final the final challenge in all of 3D Zelda speedrunning. Until Tears of the Kingdom comes out, that is. Yeah. But... I mean, who fact, knows? It, that that could be like Breath of the Wild in that even speedruns a few days after it comes out are like an hour long. It could be, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, oh yeah, someone actually is currently working on uh, Barrier Skip. From time to time, we always have people popping up and saying, yeah, I can go find Barrier Skip, and then... They do so to various degrees of success, and it has not actually happened yet, but who knows? It could happen. Uh, the current thought process is that we can unload the barrier uh, by doing some actor unloading like Wind Waker used to do. Here's the fourth and final King Bulbin fight, which is kind of an odd thing to say given that you've only fought King Bulbin once before. That was textbook. Yep, yeah, very nice. It's technically possible to one cycle King Bulbun, but it's kind of hard. Requires good quick spins. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I saw it on ZSR and I was like, hey, is this faster? And they're like, I, I still I still haven't tried it. It's on my it's on my list of to do. It's to learn yeah. the one cycle for that. I tried it a little bit, and I, I'm just not consistent enough at quick spins to do it. Uh, hold on, I need to listen for this, sorry. Oh. Okay, never. Well, I didn't get it anyway. I was I was listening for a, a sound cue to try to get a frame perfect backflip. You can go ahead. Sorry. Interesting. Yeah. So he was trying to do a frame perfect backflip to save warp that would have skipped the midna text. 
Um, it's going to save warp anyway because it's essentially equal to just rolling back. But that's interesting. I have only ever known one other person. It was Pope uh, who time tried to time that, and he oh, didn't try okay. to time it for very long. <laughs> Uh, go ahead about what you're saying about uh, King Boblin, the one cycle. Oh yeah, yeah. I just my quick spins weren't consistent enough, so I I couldn't do it reliably. Oh okay. Well, I'll have to try it. I'll have to give it a shot. I, I don't really know anything about it. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth a shot. Or you could run Hundo where it's free. That's a great right. spin. Yeah, I'll just, true. I'll just hit barrier skip. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you can a skip a barrier. bunch of these, actually. You're supposed to fight all these enemies. We only do it once. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's actually that's not true. But when we well, when we fight all the Boblins, we only do that once. Uh, the Bacoblins, with that, with yeah. the bomb. With the, the Bacoblins, sorry. Um, but the other one, we a lot of them we can skip. Yeah, this one is skippable in Hundo. Uh, it's only skippable with Jump Strike. But um, can't do that here. Pretty quick fight, anyway. Especially with ball and chain. That's another example of a fight that would be uh, quite a bit longer without ball and chain. It, it would really only be a few seconds, but yeah, ball and chain is really nice for that. Now it's just setting up to throw the boomerang right after the cutscene without aiming. Here's a very difficult lantern puzzle. Hope he gets it first try. Yeah, I hope so. I, if I didn't know the order, this would kind of stink, don't you think? I, I do. Luckily, the order is always the same. Could you imagine if it was random every every time? That would be so awful. That would be that would be wow. like the death the death of runs every can, every time. Can you imagine having a ton of RNG right at the end of your speed run? Heck, wait. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Goodbye to those two Denalfos. They did not live for very long. They lived for like two and a half hours or something? Oh, uh, well, true, true. They were just waiting there for me. Yeah, sitting there chatting, having a good time. Yeah, this is kind of a boss rush. Uh, there was a mini... Or, sorry, a Dark Knight mini boss in Temple of Time that obviously we skipped. Uh, or Alphos was the mini boss of City in the Sky that I'll skipped as well. Um, I guess that's it in terms of mini bosses. Lots of enemies to fight here, but it's pretty easy to make quick work of them. Yeah, every time I, I beat them, I go rip bozos. Oh look, there's the uh, there's the chest. We should go get it. Oh no, there are enemies. Oh they're no, kill you there are more careful. enemies. Oh no, they have snipers. Oh no, Link. Splat. All right, oh, he's, he's dead. dead. He's, this is the dead. end. GG. Oh, well, I guess not. Well, I keep oh. forgetting that. Uh, well, the timer that would be world record. Two forty six. New world record. Wow. GG. Beat your summer best, or well, nearly. <laughs> Well, we beat Zant. Zant's truly the final boss in this game, right? Hmm. I mean, there's not like another guy who's bigger and badder that's pulling all the strings. I think it's this hawk. I think so. And maybe it's one of these guys. Hey, I remember the. Oh, I remember that hawk guy. Yep, totally, totally met him. And that girl. And yep, it's the friends we made along the way in cutscenes right. that I skipped. So, uh, fun fact: in Moon Jump, any percent. It's possible to get into the boss key, <clears throat> like this area you're in right now, without opening the door and like hitting the cutscene. And you can't actually escape, but you can lure the Aralphos over from the other side and have it join you in that little room and kill you, and then death warp back. That is it's interesting. Very, it's very <laughs> silly. That is really funny. Alright, it's the final staircase! Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that room looked trivial, but it's just because of the path Al took. Um, 
you're supposed to kind of get stuck in that room. There are a bunch of ghost rats. Uh, and you're supposed to end up transforming into wolf and following a set path around the room, but it turns out if you just keep jumping, you're fine. I'm gonna wait. You gotta go at the correct time here, or else these uh, spinners will hit you. Yep. Okay, this is comical that this works. Like yep, you just claw shot right past this guy. <laughs> like the, the funniest part, I'm told, because th this was found before I started speedrunning this game, but the funniest part is that this wasn't found for years and years. Like, I think this was no! found in wow. 20... Uh, I'm not going to make up a year, but it was, like, way more recently than you'd think. It is as simple as it looks. You literally yep. claw shot, and that's it. And it skips this, like, final fight. I just, I don't know. Like, Nintendo is like, hey, let's let's put a claw shot, like, just right there. Let's put a target just right it's there. It's almost like it's intended. <laughs> it feels like it's intended. Like, I don't know. Okay, um, fun fact, if I pull item wheel here, frame perfectly, the game crashes. Yep. Good call not doing that. Um, All right. Yeah, this is the final boss sequence, the first step is Puppet Zelda, and her attacks are just RNG. Uh, the fastest Puppet Zelda you can get is a 7 cycle with very little floating around between attacks, but unfortunately based on how this works, Al is definitely not going to get that, he's going to get at least an 8 cycle. At least 8, yeah, because the first one needs to be a ball, the first one wasn't. Yeah. So that, it, it should be one attack that's a ball, then one that's not, then one that's a ball, then three that are not balls. So yeah, so here we're still on pace for 8. Because yeah. what we had was one that was not a ball, and then ball, and then not ball, and then ball. And then now she's going to do three attacks, guaranteed, that are not a ball. We want to, her to do a charge attack like this. This is actually the faster. It's actually a pretty fast eight so far. We don't want yeah. her to do the triangle attack, the triforce. That's a slower attack. And we want her to... Okay, so here it is. There's the triforce attack. So yeah, those it's are really... slower attacks. It, it's a really common misconception that only the number of cycles matters, but yeah, the kind of attack she does and how much time she floats around in between also matter a lot. Like, you, you can have an 8-cycle that's nearly as fast as a good 7-cycle, or an 8-cycle yeah, that sure. costs you 30-plus seconds. Yeah, there's a lot of RNG in this fight. That's why it's very rare to have a good one. Is it 8? Yeah, not bad. That was actually a pretty decent 8. So, like, that's an example. That could have been faster than a bad 7. Um, yeah. Because that was a pretty decent eight. We got one triangle, and she 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 attacked pretty quickly. Yeah, that was not bad. All right, check your email. Oh, yep. Time for everyone to send an email. Email me, email me, email me. <laughs> the very convenient use of the ball and chain there. If Al didn't have that, he'd have to be transforming between wolf and human a bunch. And he's going to do a very specific amount of damage to Beast Cannon on each cycle, because Beast Cannon actually has... A, <laughs> A number of very similar phases that he can go through and if we do the exact right amount of damage then we can three cycle him and make it so he never just teleports around the room a bunch which is really nice i'm deliberately keeping the camera off of the back wall because that lags up the game a lot yeah Uh, oh, here. I didn't see him. Okay. <laughs> email, email, email. Email me. Yeah, everyone and conveniently... please email Mr. Alberta. Yes, I, I, everybody email me right now. Conveniently, also that strat that we did, not only does it make him spawn faster, but also it makes him one hit. So now we just need to hit him. We don't need to transform into human to deal the final damage. Yeah. Is also convenient. Saves a good bit. Failing those uh, those attacks loses a lot of time. A lot, a lot, a lot of time to, to mess up the combos in the fight. All right, horseback. And there are three RNG-based horses that Ganon can take here. Pretty easy to handle any of them. Uh, you just got to make sure that you are aiming your pono directly at him, because that is the direction that Zelda will shoot. 
lot of new runners like to blame Zelda for aiming the wrong direction, when in fact, it's all in your hands. That was actually a perfect horseback. Yeah, that, that was, was really good. I got a good pattern. The good pattern is a lot easier than the other patterns. He can either go turn right, go uh, well, turn left, or turn very, very left. He turned just a little bit left at the very start, and that pattern, I already know what he's going to do every single time. So I know where to shoot, because I know, oh, he's going to turn right here. Oh, he's going to turn left here. Like, I know exactly what he's going to do, so I know where to aim. Yeah. So that pattern is very consistent. While the other patterns actually are, not only are they harder, but I think he's more random too, like more subject to variation. So three different yeah, patterns. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, they just, they're, they can get pretty annoying. So you gotta be ready for any pattern. All right, so this is looking like a 253. So. Yeah, very close to a 254, but I think you, you're just under. And the final boss fight in this game is very, very easy. Just gonna, oh, whoops. Gonna get poked a little bit, but then uh, run behind him. I think they messed up. All right, 254, oh, no. never mind. Okay. Oh. Dead. All right. <laughs> wow, he is just. <laughs> yeah, give him a sec. All right, there we go. All right, and time. GG. GG. What is that? GG, a 2.54.07 on my timer. Would have been a nice. 2.53, but um, making the final boss look a little harder. Keep it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GG, that, that's a very nice marathon time. Thank you, yeah. And my big thing is I do... You got oh, it, sorry, you got what did you say? No, you got it, you got it. My big thing is no resets, so I've completed now. That's my 119th completed run of this category. So... Um, lots of completed runs, so I do a lot of no resets, so a lot of my runs look actually a lot like this, so. What were y'all saying? Sorry. I was gonna say that was a really good time for a no reset run, so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, that is Twilight Princess Any Percent. Uh, it is the longest 3D Zelda Any Percent. Actually, fun fact, the... 3D Zelda challenge, which is basically completing all of the 3D Zelda games in a row, back to back, is six hours. <laughs> now, how long is Twilight Princess? Three hours. <laughs> so Twilight Princess is half of the challenge. Oh my. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, because like, this is the least broken of all Zeldas, by a lot, like, by a... by a lot. Uh, now, it, it's funny because there's a lot of glitches and there's a lot of skips in the run, but all the others just managed to be a lot more broken. I mean, we don't have barrier skip. Like, Wind Waker would be around this length, or actually longer, if it didn't have barrier skip. But barrier skip breaks the heck out of Wind Waker, so if we could just get barrier skip in this game, the 3D Zelda challenge would be way, way, way shorter, so. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I appreciate, uh, the commentary. I'm gonna do some shoutouts, so, let's see. Alright, who am I shouting out? I'm gonna shout out the whole Twilight Princess community for helping me learn this game, because, uh, uh, anyway, I, 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 I don't know if you guys know me, but I used to, I, well, my, I'm mainly known for Windmaker HD speedrunning. I have every single world record in that game, and I decided to learn a new, uh, game. I actually, I've only been running this game for 11 months. 11 months since my first run, and so that's a very, very fast improvement. Uh, very, very, very fast. And I definitely could not have done it without Beast, Bruggles, uh, Glubbers, Zacklink, uh, oh my goodness, who else? I'm gonna get, go down my entire DMs list. Jeez, Demon, uh, Ian, Miles, uh, the guy downstairs, who else? Dean, Machine, I'm just going through my DMs right now. Delighted, <laughs> Simikins, Crosser, <laughs> Eggerson, uh, all right, that's that's like that's the the big bulk of them. But yeah, thank you guys so so much for helping me learn this game. Oh, Ethernet, the Ethernet boys as well. So I, I've had a lot of support from people in the in the community. So very very good community. If you guys are thinking of learning Twilight Princess, it's a very very good welcoming community. Uh, really good folks in that community. Boiled Beast, did I not shout you out? Oh my goodness, well, I you, did shout you, you out. You said okay. me first, I believe. Okay, Boiled Beast, thank you so much for doing commentary with me today. Uh, your commentary is like superb S tier commentary. So thank you so 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 much. Um, yeah, thanks for having I me. I enjoyed it. I'm so glad you were here today. So, um, um, but yeah, a lot uh, of fun talking about something you invested a lot of time in. That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah, Wildebeest is the world record holder for almost every category in this game, though I'm trying that's, to give him a run for his true. money. Well, a lot it's, of them. <laughs> main board. Yeah, main three and then a lot of category extensions. Yeah. That's my L's. Yeah, he has the any percent all dungeons, 100% uh, all mirror shards, I think. Yeah, all dungeons, all mirror shards, all fused shadows. Um, not Goron's mi Goron Mines RTA or Glitchless. Mm -hmm. um, or Master Sword RTA. Or for a simple just, no save and quit. There's a lot of good runners in this game. It's a very competitive game. A lot of people who know their stuff and have been around for years. I mean, Demon has been running this game since 2012. And yeah. he's... <laughs> that's 11 years. Like. One of the great things, or at least the things that I appreciate about the fact that this game hasn't changed that much, like speedrunning it hasn't changed that much in the past decade or so, is that people from way back then have gotten really good times. Like some of the highest times on the leaderboard are from, you know, five years ago or something. Um, like people were getting 254s, uh, I don't know when the, last, when the first one was, like six years ago or something like that. Um, and like, there's just so much knowledge and, and the knowledge never really goes out of date. Like there are so few rooms that we just don't go to anymore that we used to go to. The people who've been playing for a long time just keep aggregating that skill. And it's very impressive to see. Uh, people who have been running since like 2013. Yeah, I have to keep that in mind when I'm struggling with a trick, and it's like, oh, I, I'll, I'll like DM Beast. I'm like, Beast, I can't do it. I can't do pillar clip, please. And then I have to like remember that these people have been doing it for like seven years. They're like, <laughs> well, I, I've been doing it for a little over two, but yeah, there are people who've been around for over a decade. Yeah. So it definitely, a lot of the stuff I think comes with time in this game and repetition. It's not really a secret besides just practice for a lot. I mean, you have to really, really dig down dirty and do a lot of practice for this game, especially the big, big tricks. Um, there's, and there's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of scenarios that you'll, you'll, you'll be in in runs. I'm like, man, I've never been in this scenario before. What do I do? And so yeah. it's just a very complicated game. I will say a lot of different RNG patterns, a lot of things that you, you get thrown at you, so. Yeah, there's a lot to learn in that regard. I totally mm. agree. Yeah, and it's also a long category, and there's a lot of rooms, and the dungeons, I mean, you go through almost every room, and every room's different, so. Every yeah. room is its own challenge, so. Very challenging, a very challenging game, I will say. Um, but yeah, I'm going for world record in this game. Uh, GDQ submissions end in two days. So uh, I'm going to be, uh, when I head off today, I think I'll eat and practice. I'm going to be uh, going for world record. I'm only 30 seconds to go. I'm really trying to get it for my submission. So before the submissions end. Uh, so if you are interested in watching me run Twilight Princess, I will be on today, later, probably all night because <laughs> I am grinding the, heck, the ever living heck out of this game. I did three no resets yesterday. I was gonna do four, but one of them died to me having to pee, so it was three. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck on the um, runs. Yeah, and if also uh, Beast Gold of Beast is doing Twilight Princess one hundred percent. He is hands down the best Twilight Princess runner I've ever seen. He's really good at one hundred percent. He has the world record. and He's trying to get up record again. Have you PB'd recently? When was the I, last time you PB'd? I PB'd yesterday. Yesterday, wow! Oh, that was that run. I actually had to go, so I wasn't able to see it. Congrats I, on your. Not many record, people so. can watch an entire hundo run. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, they can hundo down. Hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go watch Bull to Beast if you're interested in watching uh, a really, really good, talented Todd Princess runner who's also a really chill guy and uh, is very good at interacting with chat and uh, has really, really funny emotes. So. Um, um, anything else you guys want to say? Um, uh, just thanks to GDQ for having us. It's always nice to showcase a TP run. Thank you both yeah. so much for being on. It was an excellent showcase. Uh, very good run. Uh, amazing commentary from both of you. So thank you so much for being on and, you know, showcasing thank the game. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. With that said, uh, that is the end of this show. We do have another show coming up. It is It's Dangerous to Go Alone with the Frost Fatal bonus stream. Just a few quick reminders before we go to a break to that. SGDQ is coming up May 28th to June 4th. It's going to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You can go to gamesnotquick.com for more information on that. As well, if you want to follow what Games Not Quick is up to, you can use exclamation links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. We'll see you in just a few minutes with It's Dangerous to Go Alone.